So in the podcast lounge today, in our second episode in the lounge, we have Larry Passanier. He just <laughs> he just had to explain how to say his last name to me. Is, is it like French or something? Or like, uh, yeah, uh, it's it, it, the French call it Passanier. That's well, see, that's <laughs> actually how I thought it was pronounced, and that's I, why I asked because I wasn't sure if it was that way. or I not. I should start a trend uh, to where I change the way that it's yeah. pronounced through through America. Just sounds pretty sound fancy. Yeah, 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 I know. Dude, go for it. Go for it for sure. And a distance myself from the ones I don't want to claim. So, <laughs> yeah, indeed. So Larry is a guitarist and a drummer and we got a cat visitor here he'll come in larry is a guitarist and a drummer and a singer he's still singing right oh yeah 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 and uh all around fucking musician band guy been playing in a million bands for a fucking million years so yeah i'm yeah. old man we- yeah well okay you're probably i think you're younger than us so how old are you 35 Five. Okay. 30, yeah, 35. We got, yeah. we got a couple years. A lot of living you have to do. Uh, <laughs> young, son, young a lot of buck here. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, you're only as old as you feel. So I'm like 90. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And fucking, uh, we were just, I guess we can just fucking get right into it because you just mentioned you fucking lost a ton of weight like last year, this year, last year. Uh, like, yeah, within like two years. Yeah. Actually, uh, February will be my two year, uh, anniversary i had that gastric sleeve surgery oh okay um, that's how you did it yep and, right. and like i went to actually came out to grand rapids to do it yeah and um they did a really good job of like with the mental part of it oh. as well as like the diet and gotcha. all that kind of stuff yeah that's why a lot of people when they have it a lot of people in my family have had it too yeah um but like they don't make the changes mentally so then they slip back uh, and, you know no different yeah, than any yeah. diet i did right. keto and lost like 150 pounds yeah. before i had the surgery oh, damn, man. and then popped it all right back on right. so um, but no, like I had that and then with the, all that, I just slowly kept it off and now I've been yeah. down. Now I'm like down almost like from my highest weight, I'm down like almost 200 pounds. Yeah. So, That's awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. You look fucking great. Dude. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I feel a lot better. I bet. I bet. Getting a little bricked up over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah. I lost some pounds during lockdown. I got really into it. Actually, we, we both did got into fucking working out a lot and mm-hmm. shit. And it's definitely gone recently for me. Like I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been doing shit, honestly. Well, so. <laughs> but I mean, you're fucking with your house and you're doing all that. That's yeah. all physical shit. Yeah, so, man. I mean, it's whether you're in a work, gym it's... or ripping up a floor, that's mm-hmm. Something, but I'm also eating like shit again. You know, I was like fucking really disciplined for a minute, and now I'm just like fuck. My weight bench is all fucking boxed up in the garage. Right now and shit, so. Never to be heard yeah. from again. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> went one of two ways during COVID. It was yep, either yep. way up or way down. Man, nobody say that same way. Was, mm-hmm. I was I was way down, and then. Uh, way up after I kind of, I kind of just hit that point where I was like, just yeah. felt like shit all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Pull that fucking mic up, dude. I'm sorry. That thing's fucking, oh. yeah, there you go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I'm going to be working on, uh, working on the setup in here. It's a fucking work in progress, you know? It looks so, fucking awesome yeah. though. Thanks, I mean, man. super chill. I mean, yeah, it's going to be, a, we're, we're like leaning into the seventies vibe. We were like, are we going to like do something with this paneling down here and that we were originally like yeah we're gonna fucking paint it and whatever and then like once we kind of got down here we were kind of like what if we just fucking like lean into it and just get like 70s chairs and get the lava lamps and like you know just find whatever like i pulled these things out of my dad's attic you know like shit like like that (laughs) i like i like the space cat that's uh one of susan's paintings she paints oh holy shit that's badass yeah she she's a fantastic artist. That's Ringo. That's our other cat. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's that's fucking sweet. Yeah, there's a and unfortunately none of them are up. There's usually a lot more of her artwork around and shit. So her nice. studio was gonna be over here, so where she paints and shit. So Hell yeah. she did a, a bunch of the artwork for my old bands and stuff too. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, like for the for Holloway yeah, or the okay. covers of the, uh, both those. Right, actually all the all the releases we did with that band, she did the nice. paintings for and stuff. I so. remember. I think. Did we play your guys' a CD release party? Uh, was it in Grand Grand Haven or something like that? The first <laughs> we did, one? That was, I think, our, like our first show ever. Oh, okay. The, ever performing as that band. And I think uh, it might have been because I think Jason Van He set that up, or he set up at least getting us on it. And we were like, uh, we were like, yeah, fuck it, we'll do it. We weren't quite like 
where we wanted to be to like get out and actually play shows at that I, point. I remember like, it was a fun ass yeah. show because it was, it was, and it it was, was weird. weird. It was at that fire department. Or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was yeah. during Coast Guard Festival too. Uh, because I remember yeah. like we're hauling all the like drums and stuff in. And at the time I was working at, uh, I think like ADAC Automotive or something, some factory. And I remember like the big, big head honcho boss, like parked in like a reserved parking spot. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of remember something and, like and, that. And, and then a cop just rolled by and I was like, that dude over there. <laughs> that's all, that's all I, I was that's like, a, that's the only time I've ratted out anybody with the cops. That's a big old swing and dick move right <laughs> yeah. there. Just pull up into that reserve spot like a boss, dude. Not giving a shit. And I was like, damn. But I remember that was a fun show. It was uh, yeah. us, you guys. I mean, I think Toledo Strip was only a band for like maybe a year. Yeah. Um, man, I don't remember who else played it with all of us. I don't either. There was quite a few bands there, yeah. though, and it was there wasn't really many people there. Or anything. Maybe like, like De- Decoy the Octopus or something, <laughs> something like that. I, I don't remember. But, no clue, man. man. Yeah, yeah, but that was the very first show we ever did, and That's we were awesome. just like, "Eh, fuck it, we'll fucking roll in." Jason was like, "You guys should come out and fucking do it." And, yeah, Firehouse had to be a pretty weird place to play. Yeah. Like, what oh, was yeah. the situation in there? Was it decked out for it? They get a stage or anything I, in there? No, just it was on the floor. It, okay. it was like yeah. it was like uh-huh. playing Johnson Hall or Palmer yeah. Hall, or it's like you literally it's just like that's the corner we're gonna play yeah. in. Yep, and then everybody's gonna hit each other here. And then back here, we might have like some soft drinks or yeah. something. <laughs> I remember they had a piano in there, really, like, an actual like upright piano, and because awesome. uh, I remember Shaner playing on it. So maybe if you fucking uh, move the actual boom in, it might not. Oh yeah, fucking... not way down. Yeah, not way down so bad. We could do something like that. Dude, Shaner was a beast. I when I used to practice yeah. over there, I'd watch him play. Well, he'd play drums every once in a while. Yeah. And... Then he'd play key. We try kept trying to talk him into playing keyboard for us, but there was uh, good he, good luck. He, I just jammed yeah. with him uh, last night or the night before. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't Tuesday night. I, I haven't seen him in years. I think I actually yeah. I ran into him at Walmart, and I'm 99 percent sure he didn't know who the hell I was. Well, yeah, I mean, when you <laughs> lost all that weight, you know. Like, and I was like, "Hi, Shane." And, he just and he's at me not like, on Facebook <laughs> or anything, so like no. he wouldn't have like saw like the, yeah the difference. Like, yeah. No, it was funny. I, and I, I see Brian every once in a while because yeah. he'll come out to shows. He's came out to a couple of Colt Snuffer shows that we've played. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't but, seen you guys yet. I haven't seen that band yet. So it's because it, it, it doesn't seem like you guys ever get to GR much, do you? Uh, we we do, but we don't. We're going to be playing at uh, Mulligan's coming up. Okay. So I'll we'll definitely playing, go to that. Yeah, I mean, that, that'll be a fun yeah. show. Mulligan's is still fun. That was still. Uh, that was our home base back in the day when we were doing Holloway. We did a lot of shows there. And so. I like the fact that they do a good like variety of like music yeah, there. Like yeah. you go there and I'll be like hardcore bands one day and then I'll be like I don't know, like death metal and then yeah. I'll be like ska punk. It's and, a lot of yeah. punk and hardcore and like just, you know, whatever fucking drony you know like oh yeah. it's just any you know whatever mm-hmm. the whatever the kids are playing nowadays yeah. you know <laughs> but, yeah it's yeah it, exactly there's so much new shit there's so many different kinds of cores i don't even yeah i don't, I don't even know i anymore. didn't know even back then dude i never gave a shit <laughs> me neither so what kind of tunes are you guys playing in that cult snufter band i've not heard um, anything either that band uh we're actually like about ready to record at least like a single or some more we got like four or five songs um that band is like it's a really weird mashup because all of us listen to kind of different shit. Okay. Like Cole, it was like a solo artist at first, and he put a band together. <clears throat> but he like likes Nathaniel Ratliff and uh, the Dead South, Amigo the Devil, and like all that real like uh, gothic like I don't know, almost kind of like with the Southern weird feel. But then yeah. like Brandon, you know, Sparky likes god like weezer but then he loves yeah, like yeah. city and color and jimmy Eat world jimmy Eat world <laughs> yep big yeah. time and then i am like i like dark throne yeah. <laughs> and like yeah. yeah and like my my favorite bands are like glass jaw and shit like that right and so we get together and colt already had a lot of these songs so by the time you add brandon's like harmonies and uh cool leads and then i play blast beats and doubles and stuff underneath some of it but we all it's kind of like almost like southern gothic rock is kind yeah. of what he went through it yeah, with yeah it's like a heavier version of um nathaniel ratliff and the night sweats or something like that okay so it's it's fun we, we do like a lot of covers uh when we do play because we'll play like three four hour shows sometimes okay um so we'll play like adele and then we'll play like uh ramones like we mix yeah. uh uh johnny cash into a ramones song and so no shit like that's yeah, fun but indeed. But yeah, we're we're gonna record a little bit here in the near future, and then 
Iron is recording right now with Jay. We already recorded all the instruments and stuff just for doing some covers and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, that's Deftones or something. He was yep. doing, right? yeah. yeah, we just did the vocals for that today. That's why I sound a little raspy. Oh, uh, okay. We did uh, Engine Number 9. Okay. And um, we did uh, Babe by Glassjaw and uh, My Hero from Foo Fighters. Oh, that one's okay. a little. That one's a little rough. Knocking no, out those really? chi- <laughs> yeah. knocking out those chino vocals oh, to yeah. do that to the uh, the chords, man. That'll put you in a bad way for a little bit for sure. And after doing both those together, I'm like, wow, Glassjaw really liked Deftones. Like just listening to them. I mean, yeah. I mean, they even had the same producer and everything. I didn't even know that. Uh, Terry Jay was telling me about it. Was that about Terry Date? Probably? It was a uh, Ross Ro- Ross Robinson, I think. Oh, okay. Like so okay, but yeah, I it was it's fun because you know you've known Jay forever, like yeah. you guys. So. It's cool. I can be like, can we record some covers or do something like that? And he'll yeah. be like, when you want to do it? And yeah. Hook it up. And I know he'll do a great job, too. Yeah. So He's fucking cranking shit out right now, man. He's putting oh, yeah. up. He's got a... We we talked a lot recently, of, like last fall, about a lot of shit. And like, oh, yeah. he definitely got a fire on under his ass, you know? Yep. <laughs> yeah, like right now, because he... He's like the on unof- he's like the official like fifth member of like Iron. Because like, he's yeah. always like our main producer. Because like... Iron started from uh, Infinite, pretty much, because I was jamming it's, in Cool. Yeah, it's pretty much the same band. Yeah, pretty, it pretty much is. Yeah. It was just like, because it used to be like, because, you know, originally I played, uh, I sang in Infinite, and then yeah. I picked up guitar when we lost guitar players. Right, yep. Um. So then I started to not suck on guitar, because I had Jay telling me, learn this riff yeah. or this trail, and then try to sing over it. Um. But then I ended up kind of giving that up, uh, and let, then they kind of moved on as a three piece, um, just so I could get my health and shit under control. And, uh, yeah. Um, the relationship I was in at the time kind of was not helping that. Mm-hmm. But then I took a break, joined Colt's thing, and then I started writing all these like metal riffs and shit like that. And I was like, man, I really wish I had somebody to jam with. And so me and Adam Eklund got together and started jamming, and we're writing a lot of cool shit. And then we went to a fire at Jay's house just to hang out, and I slowly talked him into playing in the band <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. he was like I, I need to concentrate on other stuff because all of a sudden yeah. you know, before you knew it we played like five shows yeah yeah but he's always like going to be the person to listen to him be like i think you should do this to make this sound better right produce it he'll be the one we like we record with um and then he'll add like stuff and if he feels like it then he'll play a live show otherwise we'll just yeah. do it without him i know he did a couple gigs with you or whatever. oh yeah. yeah uh this next one that we're playing will be the first one he hasn't played since we played our first show when yeah. Skeletons opened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's trying to zero in on what it is that, you know, is going to be his uh, end game. I, whether, you know, mm-hmm. it's producing, beats, uh, music videos, because he does everything, yeah. Yeah. but you can't do 100% in everything. Yeah. So well, me, that me too. That's my problem. Yeah. That's a big thing that he and I connected on a lot. Oh, yeah. It's like, fuck, man, he's like spread thin. And it's like, yep. I can do everything, but like, you know, like you got to kind of like narrow it down. Oh, or oh like, yeah. You know? Dude, I did that last year because at one point last year I was in four bands and that was, it was, it was stupid. Yeah. I was in two bands in Chicago, uh, which is actually how I hooked up with Jeff. Do you know Jeff at all? Jeff. Uh, he's from Kalamazoo. He's our bass player. He What's plays his last name? Jeff Hostetler. I, I think that's how you say it, right? Hostler? Hostetler. Uh, he plays guitar and drink their blood. Uh-uh. Big, big, <laughs> buff, redheaded dude. He's, Metal. <laughs> oh, dude. He's fucking hot. Drink hot. their he, blood. I feel like I've heard of them, actually. Oh, yeah. I like Ben. Uh, ben Boggs is their singer, and okay. he always, uh, he's always been really, really cool. He used to be in another band, too, called uh, Sleep Eater, I think is what it was oh, called. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yep. and then uh, Jeff used to be in a death metal band called Eternal uh, around here. Okay, um, but yeah, uh, I was out of the scene for a long time. Honestly, I missed oh, yeah. I missed a good ten years of you know. <laughs> I feel yeah. Well, and I kind of was all over the place because I lived in Kalamazoo for like mm-hmm. four years, and then I was back to Muskegon. But yeah, it was it was a lot. And then I was, last year I was going back and forth to um, Chicago. I'd say twice a month and then still doing iron sharpens iron and then still doing Colt Now for last year. I would think we counted it up. We did like 35 shows total last year. Nice, man. Damn, nice. It's like, yeah. I'm just like, holy shit. It's enough shit. to keep you busy. <laughs> right. So you're just down to the two bands now? Are you trying to yeah. like call the herd a little bit? Yeah. The, the other two bands kind of, uh, the one's going to finish up and then the other one, I uh, just, I don't really know what's happening with that, but I'm not a part of it anymore. I was like, I got to zero in. I'm in a better relationship now too. So I'm like, I need to give that, you know my uh attention to because 
I'd be gone constantly. And then I play at church all the time too. So I'm like between church, the other two bands, and then personal life. I'm like, yeah, I, I, that's about all I can manage past that. Yeah, it's too yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Making but, a yeah. trip down to Chicago all the time, right? Punishing, you know. Even right. if it's only a few times a week, man. And, and I mean, months rather. Oh yeah, and the money it was just like, and it was during COVID too. So it's like. I'd go from Michigan to Indiana and to back down to Chicago and everybody's COVID like laws and restrictions were different. So I felt like I was like playing like, I don't know, musical charades on whether I had to have a mask on, whether or <laughs> yeah. not like, you know, I had to pay the, the toll fee or anything like that, or whether I could go into the restaurant and sit down. It was, it was, were you guys nuts. able to play shows and stuff down there? Was it like on a no. hardcore lockdown? Okay. It was all like pretty much during lockdown and we, uh, we recorded a bunch of stuff and wrote a bunch of stuff. Um, it was weird because I went down there just to do one band and then their other band lost a drummer. So then I joined that band too, because they wanted me to, and then they lost pretty much a guitar player slash bass player. And so then I helped write the songs on guitar too. And then the other band that we originally started kind of got put on the back burner and all of it was just too much. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, how do you get hooked up with those guys being that far away? Just, like, um, just I did, looking for somebody or somebody knew from back in the day or something? Somebody knew okay. from back in the day. Yeah. And then I put a compilation out for like suicide awareness with Iron like two years ago now. And uh, that connected us because all the bands were together on it. So then we ended gotcha. up getting together. And Jeff, I already knew because of uh, Drink Their Blood and playing with Infinite Design. So, okay. And I always wanted to jam with him because he's just a really fucking cool dude. And he's really, really talented. So he's just one of those guys you always wanted to jam with and hang out with. Him and uh, Adam Eklund are a lot alike. They're, like, just super, like, just chill and composed. But they're just big, burly, yeah. you know, bust dudes. <laughs> right. like, like, holy shit. Nah, I'm not a man. Looking that like an extra from, <laughs> extra from Game of Thrones yeah, out there. Dude. Looking like the mountain. It's like Arnold, man. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just like just I'm just like the hound just sitting here in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no, that's rad but, though. Yeah, no, they're all really cool dudes, but yeah, I uh I dropped down to the two and those are the two I'm focusing on now and booking out for maybe for quality instead of quantity this year, just so that we're not overpacking ourselves. Right. Uh, with Colt, we booked so many last year that then we got a bunch of really good opportunities and that we couldn't say no. But then we already had all these other opportunities, too, that were just kind of like gigs to try to like keep the band fun going, too. Or just things that we had kind of overgrown, like so that we didn't have to haul a PA anymore or sure. just different things like that. And uh, so this year we're like, we're, let's plan ahead on already figuring we're going to get a show like from this, that or the other thing and not book out, you know seven months in advance <laughs> right 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 by like february last year we already booked like our thanksgiving show and, yeah and i'm like let's not do that this time <laughs> <laughs> right 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 so that's but, i mean but still though you're out there fucking doing it you know oh like, yeah i can't find our problem right now is we're fucking we can't find like a steady guitarist and like the industrial is, thing like our main guy fucking bailed on us went to cali and then we got another guy yeah. who's fucking great and uh but he's playing in a cover band so he's always booked so yeah. like we get show offers and it's like hey can we do this one and it's like no i'm already booked and he's like you know it's the same thing it's like dude it's five months out you're already right. booked it's like fuck man yeah that's so. how I, I was like man that's just too much and then even if something happens and you're like oh, i'm burnt out because then you start to feel like a job instead of fun which yeah. is you know oh, yeah we're not rich from this so it's like if you lose the the fun part of it then yeah. why are you even doing it yeah i mean especially if it's like death metal and shit like that because you know you ain't making no money <laughs> no. doing that so but no i mean like i think iron has three shows on the books and i think uh i think colt has like three shows on the books so like right now nice. they're all pretty spaced out actually their next show is called jeff fest it's for jeff and it's in kalamazoo at papa pete's and it's just like a whole bunch of bands are all playing and it's for his birthday and Ben puts it together. So cool. I never played Papa Pete's. That was one venue I never got into. It's a service. really cool venue. And yeah. uh, there's this company called Merciless Promotions, and they book all, pretty much all the shows there. Oh, you have to hook me up with them. Yeah. Like, I didn't really, it's hard to even figure out like how to get a hold of them. I mean, know? we got a show I think that's coming up in there in April or something. 
I mean, heck. I mean, I think that there's even yeah. an opening there if you guys wanted to jam us. Yeah, well, send me, the, send me the date, and I'll see I if will. my fucking asshole. <laughs> Talking to you, Chaz, you motherfucker, if you're fucking listening right now, you son of a bitch. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Otherwise, he's going to play two guitars. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to hit that up, man. I actually hail from Kalamazoo. I've been down there for 20 years and never been to Papa P's. Yeah. Oh, never yeah. set foot inside there. Dude, I, lo- I love it. I remember I played there a long time ago with Infinite at... Uh, uh, reinventing yesterday's show. I mean, remember all those dudes with Luke Fortin and all them? Nope. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. no. Oh, he sang in uh, Indrid, and okay. back when Indrid and uh, If He Dies, He Dies, and um, oh God, who all? I don't even remember what band I was in. I think I was in Densmore or Time of Plague or something. At the, I don't even remember. There's been so many bands, man. Yeah. But yeah, he he was on there and he played that show at Papa Pete's. Us, Doctor Doctor, all these metalcore yeah. bands and hardcore bands and shit. Yeah, yeah. But that was the first time I saw. It. They've rebuilt the stage and all this other shit since then. And Jeff always does the sound there, so it always sounds good. Oh, okay. Because he does his own recording and, and audio and stuff in right. Kalamazoo. Um, so that's a really cool, really cool place to play. Really cool place to watch shows. It's always cheap too, and they got fucking amazing pizza. Nice. So yeah, it's know. it kind of is a pizza joint, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yep, it is, and it's damn good too yeah. so if you play you get a free pizza so i mean that's fuck. all they pay man. <laughs> <laughs> you get money and pizza nice and nice one so topping though one topping. only one <laughs> topping yep. one damn not trying to go broke on the side <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they don't pay but in beer i think you can pick pizza or beer so uh, the straight edge guy picks the pizza yeah although yeah. it's probably just as bad for you as the beer <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah we're playing there and turnstiles in grand rapids so. Yeah, that uh, when we, when I was gigging, that didn't even exist. So. Turnstiles didn't. Yeah, no. Actually, yeah, I don't think I, I I never heard of that when I was playing shows when I was younger it's either. It's fairly new. I think it's probably only three or four years old or something. Like that. I've actually never been there either. It's so. pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, we played there a couple times with Colt. Uh, the owner's a really really nice guy. Yeah. Um, the guy that books there, his name I think his name is Scott or something like that. I can't remember. But um yeah they're all really really cool dude yeah. that'd be a great place for you guys to get into too yeah yeah I know like uh, uh I know a lot of bands that play there all the time so it's just a matter of you know yeah I know sorry not sorry is one of the bands that like Colt also plays in okay and they play there all the time right um the dudes I used to be in uh time of plague with uh Pain Divine played there not that long ago and we're playing there with uh Kill Tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, man, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hit them up and get those guys on the podcast. Hell yeah, they're all, <laughs> dude, they're all such awesome. We, dudes. we played a bunch of shows with them back in the day too. It's awesome that they're still fucking doing. Oh yeah, it that, dude, know? that's that have to be like the longest reigning band. Yeah. I mean, They've I know Infinite's close, but like, I think that Kill Tomorrow was around first. I think. I mean, they went through a million different lineups too, yeah, but I mean, it's yeah. still like the same solid, like, yeah. I know at least three people and then they've yeah. had Tyler on there for quite a few years now too. Yeah, so yeah. I rode the boss or uh, bus with the Ross back in the days no of my shit. boy growing up. Oh yeah. yeah. Dude, that's fellow, awesome. Fellow Nunica boy. Good, uh, good crew out there. Good crew. I, I, yeah. All of them are really cool ass dudes. I, I still talk to the Eric. He used to play bass for him. Uh, he does that Davidian uh, screen printing. So I'll do like design work for him and then. I actually did design work for Damien, their drummer, because he's like opening up like an electrical business yeah, or something yeah. like that. So I did his logo and shit for him and stuff nice, like that. Nice. And so, God, we've all known each other for years before I was old enough to get into a bar. Right. So, is I thought Damien was like, did he like go to Detroit area or something? Or I thought he had moved mm. over there or something for a while. Uh, not that I know of. I thought I he's always be totally been right. in the area, but I could be I could totally be wrong. my ass on that. But yeah. I mean, I know I've known all of them. Jason, their singer. I remember going seeing him at MCC when I was going there for like my credits when I was eighteen, and yeah. he was like the IT guy. So he has <laughs> his hair all pulled back Indeed. in a neat little ponytail, yep, looking yep, all yep. like studious. Classic I don't really IT know guy. Him. Look, gotta have it. Hell yeah. He's yeah. I don't really know him. He, you know, he's a cool uh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. He seems cool. I mean, yeah. All, all those guys are really cool. And then uh, I think we're playing with Skin Jacket, which they're they're pretty cool dudes. They're from around here. And then Mouthful of Locusts. You should get them on there, too. Uh, my buddy Perry yeah. is really, really cool dude, yeah. Yeah, all right. They just got listed from, uh, I don't know if it was Recoil. Oh, it was from Review. It's like one of the top 20 bands or 10 bands to watch for the year. Colt, Colt and us were on that list last year, and then they're on this list this year. So that was nice, pretty cool. Nice, nice, yeah. But hell yeah, man. Yeah, I didn't know they still did that. Review Magazine, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nice. It has a lot of cool shit. And it'll have, like, up-and-coming shows. Uh and then I'll have like just like local businesses and shit like that on yeah, there too. That yeah, John, yeah. 
John guy from Local Spins, I think, does some yeah. stuff in there too. I love he's, John. Yeah. he's a really, really nice guy. Yeah. yeah. He loves Colt shit. Him and Colt have been talking since nice. before I even was yeah. in the band, I guess. So Yeah, he doesn't uh uh he really only kind of fucks around with like live shows. You yeah. Know? So but yeah, he's been doing it for I used to he we used to review us in the when he worked at the Grand Rapids Press. Holy shit. You know? So like and then he got I I don't want to say if he got fired or laid off or quit or whatever happened yeah. there or whatever but then he started local yeah. spins after that huh yeah yeah he's a really cool guy we yeah. were on a podcast with him for i don't know like probably a year ago i think after brandon like almost just just joined i think was pretty much after that and then uh, does he do a podcast a local spins podcast he should be i don't know not. i think i don't know if it's called the listening uh, listening room or what he calls it yeah. but uh he does one every once in a while and I know we talked a little bit about it too. And then he covered the Skeletons uh, opening too when we played it. Yeah. And so I mean, he kind of dips his feet into different things. Mm-hmm. I know. We I don't wanna... know if there's necessarily room for another local music podcast. Feels like we kind of got right? that on lockdown <laughs> for this area. If I do like, say so it's myself, like a, it's the side of Wabash. <laughs> <laughs> I draw the line here. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's our turf. Don't make me fight an old man. Okay, <laughs> I man. will. <laughs> no, man, that's kill. You're kind of crushing it, dude. And those, I see fucking Colt and you guys playing all the time. You know, so Thanks, like, man. yeah, yeah. It, it's fun. It's it's cool to be able to play like because because in Iron I I do all the vocals. I mean, Jay does some backup vocals when he's when he plays with us, and then I play all the guitar. Um, so then to play drums with Colt, it's kind of cool just to be able to play different instruments and then yeah. have two different feelings too for both of them so yeah, yeah they're pretty different yeah pretty different bands oh yeah and, <laughs> i mean iron is like i'm not playing anything too technical i mean it's pretty much i don't know do you guys have you already have music out oh yeah because right? yep. i ha- honestly i haven't heard it oh yeah so it's, I it's, it's like uh it's like uh i don't know you're listening to like the casey strain and uh well, yeah it's like that mixed with like uh there's some newer hardcore bands like Knocked Loose that we I like a lot, uh, and then some like good old black metal. It's like black metal mixed with hardcore and, right, and metalcore yeah. and stuff like that. Did Jay record that stuff too? Yeah. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. He recorded all that, and so it has some infinite things to it. But you can tell that it came from more riffs that like I had uh, came with, and then Jay like helped restructure them when were needed. Uh, okay. Versus it being riffs that Jay came up with because I'm not sweet picking through thirty yeah. percent of it. Yeah, <laughs> or, like dude, all these he's just like he's wild. He's a shit. wild like guitar player. Like he'd yeah. show me different things. I'm like, dude, I, I'm not. I thought I, I went down the like the trail of trying to learn how to sweep and stuff like that. I'm like, when am I gonna use this? Yeah. How about I just learn how to like you know, you know, I don't know, like play a chord clean. Like stuff like that, or <laughs> try to learn what a lead is, or you know, work on my picking hand. So I mean, it's cool because you can definitely listen to both bands and hear the differences, even though we have like three of the same members. Yeah, and I know their CD is going to be coming out. I don't know when, but I know that it's pretty much done, and it sounds fucking awesome. Oh, I thought it was done. Fucking like I heard it like three months ago or yeah. something. I thought it was done then. It's pretty much done. I mean, like, I don't know about the artwork because I was going to help them with some of the artwork and stuff like that or, the, like, the layout and stuff like right. that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they have, like, a release date or anything like that in mind, but yeah. I'm not on that one. But some of those songs are so old that I was still in the right. band and we were, yeah. like, writing yeah. them. So... Because they were here cool. fucking, what, Jesus, when was that? When fucking Jason and Mod were here? I mean, like, it was... Like three months ago? Three, four months ago. Yeah. Yeah. And like they were like talking back. about it was yeah. ready to release then, so... Oh, yeah. I mean, that... that finishing touches, that. putting the finishing uh-huh. touches on. I mean, they, they, they started recording that before he recorded and finished the Iron stuff. Yeah, I know he had a lot of... I mean, we went through it all on the podcast and everything, so you can go oh. back and listen to that, but like... Oh, yeah. he, they went through a lot of not productivity for a while there just because yeah, well, it was fucking locked down. Right, and, and COVID everything. happened. And, uh, yeah. Because for me, I like it. The first Iron CD, I played everything. So on that one, I did it with Jay, and um, it was before I started jamming with Adam. So on the very first CD, I went through, and I did like the drums first, and then the guitar, and then the yeah. bass, and then the vocals. And then um, we put that out. And then people dug it, and I was like, well, it'd be really cool to play a fucking show with this uh, since people actually like it. And so then I started jamming with Adam a little bit more, and then I talked to Jay into it, and then I talked to Jeff into playing bass. And so then we played like four or five shows, and within the last year, then we started writing songs that are on the latest one. Uh-huh. And that one's called The Aftermath of Tragedy. And that one, everybody else, everybody's playing their own instruments. Right. So I'm not playing all of it. Yeah. But on all the covers that I've put out, because I've covered 
hate breed, uh, terror, minor threat. Uh, I did like a version of Carol of the Bells for Christmas. And then I'm about ready to do the Deftones, Glass Jaw, and then Foo Fighters. And I did all the instruments and in all of those, other yeah. than I think Jeff did the bass for some of the, I think, Hate Breed and Terror song. So, what's your uh, go to? You kind of cut your teeth and drumming, it sounded like. Was the guitar thing something you picked up after the fact? I think I heard. Um, yeah, I, st I started off pretty much as drums because, okay. uh, I think I had a guitar and I was like, this takes way too much fucking effort. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I was going to beat the shit out of stuff. Right. <laughs> and so I like started jamming on drums and uh, got the hang of that. Like around like 13, it was like 14, just jamming and playing like gutter punk or I was like super big into like Operation Ivy and like oh, shit oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. So <laughs> got real into that and like jammed with some uh, local friends and stuff like that and some punk bands. And then I got into like, Metalcore when like Norma Jean and like Poison yeah. the Well and that's all the, that that's stuff. That's what I think of when I think of the kind of shit that you guys oh, do. Yeah, is that, yeah I, I love that kind of shit. Like, uh, I mean, that was what I grew up listening to. So, I mean, that was when then I started a band kind of like that with some friends. And Poison I, the Well, dude, man. That, yeah. that, 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 that still slaps so <laughs> yeah. fucking hard. I mean, I remember buying that at fucking a Hot Topic oh, in yeah. Kalamazoo, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the opposite of December. I don't even know, but oh, I was man. trying to find a band. It was right when I moved down there, and it was like a Craigslist ad, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, I didn't actually know. It, so it was some band, and they were older than me, and they were like, we're looking mm -hmm. for, you know, a singer, a screamer, or whatever. You know, so I'm like, oh, I'll check these guys out. And, but they were like, we're doing like Poison the Well. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. Right. So I went, I went to Hot Topic and bought it. <laughs> that's awesome. Dude, that's, that's, I got into, I, I actually, I think I saw like a Norma Jean music video, like on MTVX or whenever yeah. that was a thing. So like, I was like, I think Jamie Joss was doing like Headbangers Ball or some shit. I don't know. But I was like, I saw like that and then like Hate Breed and Poison. Like they had a bunch of really badass music videos yeah. on there. And so that really, got me into that and kind of got me away from uh some of the other metal and stuff that i was listening to because i just thought it was different and then uh we started jamming with that and becoming better at drums because i got a double kick pedal because i wanted to try to play the same shit and then i didn't start playing guitar until like later on when i was in uh time of plague and i'd mess around with guitar a little bit and then uh later on more when we kept losing them for infinite so then i picked it up just so we could try to write so i'd be like I'm going to play like the bar chords so that you yeah. can play that your leads or work on trying to figure them out. And then nobody ever fucking worked out. So <laughs> I just learned how to play guitar and tried to do both. Step yeah. up so, and dominate, yep. baby. Yeah. Take Dude, that remember, shit over. At one point we were, it was, it was just stupid. I was playing keyboards at the same time as playing guitar and singing and I was like, and playing samples. And I was like, this, this is just too much. <laughs> I think I, the heavyweights or whatever they do at the intersection, there's yeah. a video of us doing that. I'm like playing keyboards during the beginning part and the breakdown. Yeah. Then all of a sudden I play guitar and it's like, yeah. At the risk of pointing out the obvious, you know, the guitar yeah. would seem to be the way to go in that oh, situation. Yeah. The same, bro. The yeah. same. You know, Speaking you're... of Kevin Shaner, <laughs> right. he's got one. We play, we used it uh, at the, uh, when we opened for Queens or like at the orbit room, he came out and I did a fucking huge solo on it. But That'd he, be badass. His, <laughs> this is random. His fucking uh, keyboard rig is down right now because his computer died. Oh, and so we jammed the other night and all he had was the keytar. So <laughs> yeah. he brought the keytar and he just <laughs> set it on the table and just desperate played Desperate times it. call for desperate <laughs> well, measures, I was like, baby. yeah. You just, get, you just start getting real uh -huh. into it. Dude, that's awesome. It's fucking it, sick, man. It's weird because, I mean, Michigan is kind of like, I mean, you know, Michigan's a big state, but like, if you, we've been jamming for a long time, it's like everybody kind of just knows everybody. If you've yeah. jammed or done anything, even if you don't know them well, like you know somebody in this band from that band or played together. I mean, we're all around the same age, but it's cool. Yeah, I, I, I miss Kevin. He was fucking hilarious. Every time I was ever over there, he was always super uh, just like chill. I think one of the last times I saw him, I saw him at the blue note actually during uh yeah. during i think it was when Jim, <laughs> jimmy's band uh was yeah. doing uh um they were like the house band uh for uh the open mic night or something like that that would, and, that would make sense and yeah. shaner like did bulls on parade and just <laughs> fucking <laughs> nice. that out man I, I, did, I, I did not expect that shit because he nailed that and just like rocked out <laughs> and you know he i've always seen him he's like just mild mannered and just reserved yeah, he's, and happy he's a chill dude and i was he's, like he can sing though. i was like damn sing. dude got into that yeah. i didn't expect that shit that's got to bring the house yeah. down he would have fucking killer too that oh yeah was yeah. and is frankly. it was badass and then uh yeah, I, mean, I miss a lot of those people like Jordan. Uh, yeah, you know, you just had you just had him on yeah, your show. Yeah, yeah. I'd seen him periodically because of like 
hanging out with Shaner and like those kind of those parties and oh, shit, yeah. you know, or whatever. Yeah. yeah He's man. a good dude. Yeah. All them guys are really yeah. cool. I mean, the only reason why we quit really jamming when I was in Toledo Strip was just because I think musically everybody's just kind of going in different directions. Yeah. I mean, it was already kind of a weird begin with anyways because all of us really, really liked different stuff. Yeah. I mean, and then I got to more into... Well, Brian really has his thing. You oh, know? yeah. Like, yep. He, I, he, he's I know good. He, you know, oh, yeah, he's great. Yeah. He loves, like... I know he really likes, like, At the Drive-In and Sparta yeah. and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Which I love those bands, too. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things about that band was covering One Arm Scissor. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> I've never yeah. been able to do that Mock shit Rock, since. baby. We hey, did yeah. it in my... Oh, yeah. <laughs> mock Rock uh-huh. performance of One Arm Scissor. Yeah. With Speaking Nick Mod's yeah. brother. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Greg. good call. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. That was huge. That was Speaking awesome. of yeah. Mock Rock, I remember Sparky doing an epic Deftones, an epic Chino, as oh, I Oh, did he? I don't remember that. Yeah. That's I plus. think it was maybe when we were in like eighth grade, but yeah, yeah. threw it down. I think he did Board or something huh. like that off nice. the, uh, the adrenaline. I, I know you told me to cover Board because I, I asked everybody because at first I was going to do seven words. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't know if I want to do that one just because I wanted to try to do these covers, but I also want to try to still make them kind of like our own and i couldn't think of a way to do that yeah with that, that one's song. pretty that's uh, a tough uh, ass yeah. to yeah. work that one and it's like so i'm like well at least engine number nine it has that sweet like ding 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 yeah. ding 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 i'm like i can just make that heavy as balls boards the shit though too. oh yeah you can't go around yeah. i mean that's the first song anybody ever heard of deftones oh, basically yeah. you know like I, I still remember the very first time i heard it it was at sean lee's and oh. they fucking played it. Yes, and, uh, we yes, were like, "What dude. the fuck is this?" <laughs> yeah, you know, a mind blower. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what Jay, Jay was saying because uh, we were he were talking about the Deftones and all that kind of shit. Because uh, I work with a dude named Jake, and he always is. He's a little bit older than me, so I'll be playing something. I was like, "Yeah, this band. I mean, I forgot this band even exists. This band's awesome." He's like, "Oh yeah, I saw him, saw him back then." Yeah, I'm like, every single band yeah. I ever listed off, this dude saw. And then same thing with Jay. I was talking about Deftones. He's like, yeah, I remember seeing Deftones and Korn when they were coming out with their first CDs yeah. with Ozzy. And I'm like, man, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Deftones a bunch of times. I've never yeah. seen them once. Oh, really? No. Oh, yeah. Never yeah. seen them. Never seen uh, uh, Slipknot, Korn, Zombie. Like any of those bands oh, that are shit, like. Man. Korn and Zombie yeah. was actually One of the, the best first shows show I ever really? went to. Yeah, Dude, it was uh, Rob Zombie ass. opening up for Korn. Like and, not yeah, huge on Van Korn, and, but yeah. uh, that was the one time I saw them. I was supposed to see Korn at uh, Lollapalooza in 1997, but the fucking uh, guitarist broke his arm. Oh, shit. And they canceled and they moved. Uh, they bumped like all the other bands back. And uh, you ever heard of a band called Failure? We got the poster over there. They're like a way more like uh, alternative rock. They never got like huge. They're pretty mm-hmm. fucking huge now. But anyway, they got bumped to the main stage. Oh, nice. And so we were like huge fans. So we were like super excited. That's cool. So, yeah. That's Canceling always... a show. For... Oh, go ahead. Are you guys from one guitar player? I'm like, why didn't they just have somebody yeah. else step in? Yeah, What's well, yeah. not very metal. You're breaking arm. I remember this uh-huh. cat. So we're going skateboarding one time. This guy decides he's going to try and take a slide, right? I'm like, yeah, you uh, why don't you go ahead and hit that one up first? We'll let you do the trial run here. Goes down the slide, he's like, bah! screaming. He's like, I think I broke my arm. Oh, like, now nah, you're just being a puss, dude. But broke the arm, and then yep. we had the jazz band yep. concert played, like a couple weeks later. I played Mando. two two concerts that next week with the broken arm. Oh yeah, yeah one on guitar and one on drums. <laughs> Throwing it down, dude. seventh grade. Or the something. show must go on, gentlemen. The show yeah. must go on. Take a note, corn. Bigger man. I was gonna say bigger man than corn. Yeah, indeed. Still singing songs while getting picked on in high school, and they're like in their forties. <laughs> it's like shit. That was the first show. That Lollapalooza show was huge. That was the first show I saw Tool at too, and uh, it was fucking Tool and Snoop Dogg, and then Devo. Nice, <laughs> nice dude. Devo, and like everybody left after Tool, and Devo That's came crazy. on later after tool and like everybody was leaving shit. you gotta catch that devo for know. sure what are they doing man you gotta have it. whip it and it was it was a <laughs> you know it was late 90s so it was very like devo was not cool at the time oh yeah know? like it's so weird because like i don't know some of those fests too it's like uh i mean I, we went i went to one called rocky i think it was rock usa or something like that in like uh wisconsin and it was like a bunch of really weird like new metal bands with like I don't know, like rock bands like Bush and Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah. yeah. But then they had like Godsmack and like. Yeah. But then they had Devil Driver. Yeah. And uh, See, all, all, all the remains. <laughs> yeah. But it was weird. There was some band that was called Wilson. I had never heard of them, but I guess they're from Michigan. Yeah. And they're playing the main stage, which was huge. And yeah. I had never even heard of them. And Black Dahlia Murder is just over here and they're playing the stage. It's probably like the size of this room. Yeah. 
And I'm just like, they're just keep on looking over at the main stage. Like, why the fuck aren't we over there? Indeed. <laughs> and this other band is talking about the Detroit Lions on the stage and nobody's watching them. But it was cool for us because, you know, we got to see them jam on a little stage like what it yeah. was when we were younger and used to watch them. So it was yeah, really yeah. fucking cool. How so. fucked up was that situation, man, with those guys? Yeah, that yeah, fucking that was, sucks, man. That was a tough one. I, I can't pretend that I was, like, a big fan or anything. But, yeah. you know, like everybody, I knew them. I think I've seen them twice with oh, other, yeah. you know, just yeah. had other concerts and shit. And it, like, it sucks because, like, vocally, he was a major inspiration for my death metal vocals and yeah. stuff, especially, like, their early stuff. Um, I kind of lost my luster for him later on with the releases, but I always like had a lot of respect for him because to me, I always looked at him like they're just like a modern version of At the Gates, okay. Which you know they loved themselves, but like I loved all their early shit, and yeah, I saw him a bunch of times. Like the, I think at least like six times just at the intersection, like, yeah. You know, opening up Friday, I think they played with I don't know, like the Red Chord a couple times and Black Dahlia yeah. talking stuff. Okay. Yep, and so I mean. Yeah, that was that was fucked up, and it was just really sudden. I mean, I didn't, yeah. and you never never know. I mean, like that mental health shit, you know, yeah. that'll yeah, that'll get you. I mean, and then they did uh, they did that fucking I don't know what you call it, a comeback show or whatever. Oh, uh, the memorial show yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we were supposed to play a show that night, and that show got canceled. Because a lot of people were because of that. Yeah, I saw several shows that were like that. Like, yeah, we're actually going to this show. Yep. Like, (laughs) yeah. Well, actually, one of the bands that were going to do it uh, was they're called Traitors. They were supposed to be the band that we're like opening up for with a bunch of other like death metal bands, but they canceled that show so that they could all go and attend that. That might have been what I saw. Or it so might what's been the one whole the just bands. for people listening? Like, what's the whole backstory on this uh, this whole deal? Did somebody off themselves? Or yeah, something, the or singer yeah, okay. committed suicide. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know how exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know it, it was fucked up because it was like it was sudden, and that's the thing that's so weird about mental health. It's like. You can think that somebody is in like a great place and then all of a sudden you just hear that like, you know, they took their lives and yeah. you have no clue what they're hiding when they go home. Yeah. I mean, because like, I mean, a lot of people didn't know. I I think I was probably now it's probably for me, it's probably been like two and a half years. But like I attempted suicide and uh, failed, luckily, but then went to a bunch of counseling and stuff so I could understand, you know, why I went down that path. But like not everybody. uh has that second chance it was yeah. just crazy like and you know a lot of people would be like how could they do that they had kids uh-huh. shit like that and i'm like they literally think they're doing their kids like a favor because the mentally they think that they're not meant for the world anymore it's so fucked up because uh you know you never really know what's going on there and uh it's really really hard to read into that shit unless they drop something, you know, yeah. with you in a conversation. I mean, yeah. And all apparently of he was super like, uh, you know, funny, entertaining, right? Like, yeah, you know, guy, and and that's a lot of guys that are like that. I mean, even like Kurt Cobain was like that. Oh yeah, just like, all these guys, you know, are like actually like really funny and cheery and stuff when you're around them and everything. Yeah. Well, think about how many comedians they always talk oh, yeah. about that. Yeah. Just wildly yeah. horror, you know, clinical yeah, depression, depression yeah. type stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know as exactly as much as people decide they want to show you, right? right? Whatever that looks right. like. Right. And behind and, the scenes, you don't know what's And, you know, maybe and when you're getting that, uh, when you're performing with other people or you're making somebody else laugh or something like that, it probably does help you feel like you're contributing to society or something like that. And then when you're by yourself, it's like... And now I'm alone. Well, that's got to uh, be especially hard, right? If you're in that yeah. mindset already and then you're kind of doing that whole thing and it's great and everybody's laughing and you're there and the oh, room's yeah. with you and then you go back home yeah. and do your thing by yourself or whatever. That's got to be a pretty massive transition. That's why fucking you know? bands used to destroy hotel rooms. Yeah. It's because the adrenaline and shit would be so high. Yeah. And they'd yeah. finish playing and then they'd get them out of there super fast, you know? Yep. And uh, the, now all of a sudden, literally like 10 minutes later, you you know, you were just on stage in front of 100,000 fucking screaming people. Right. Chicks fucking throwing their panties at you yep. and everything. And then fucking, <laughs> you know, like literally though, and then fucking like 10 minutes later, you're alone in a hotel room. Yep. And it's just like, they would just fucking go so, crazy. So uh, you guys want to play <laughs> yeah. some Mario Kart? Uh, right. <laughs> I'm just like, I just want pizza. <laughs> pizza and a cola and then a rest. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how ba- people do that shit. I mean, like now, like tour like that, and uh, you know, like people even fuck like Elton John is like touring and shit like that. And how old yeah. is he now? I mean, yeah. he just played his last show though. I think 
So yeah. he's calling it retired. He's got to yeah. be like mid seventies, isn't he? Or yeah, he's like got to be, and he's still recording too. Like he's 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 doing a lot of guest spots on shit. Like That's he's cool. been on like that. He was on that Lady Gaga record. Got to keep like, that sweet check oh, yeah, coming yeah, in, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, keep yeah, that yeah. money train yeah. rolling. That's baby. cool. Like uh, I mean, I don't know. I just I just think about that shit, and I'm like, man, I play one show and really throw the fuck down, and my body hurts the yeah, next day. Yeah. I'm like, and and we were playing like, you know, for, I mean, for like Iron, we're playing like. 30 minutes usually if we're really throwing like we're playing yeah. a show for that like colt sometimes will play like for three hours three hour three one hour sets or yeah. whatever but like i'm fucking tired by the time i can't imagine going from that to then going and like partying it up and then like traveling to another state and doing it again like yeah. the next day i'm like yeah. and then eating like shit all the time yeah, because you're yeah. broke and you don't have health insurance so yeah. i'm like none of that shit sounds appealing to me anymore at the age yeah. of 35 i'm like I want to do like maybe a couple like one week streaks past that. I'm too fucking old for that shit. Yeah. You know, I want to sleep in my own bed. Yep. With, yep. with my cats in the house and yep. with my old lady. <laughs> I want to play one show, <laughs> eat some pasta primavera, Hell call yeah. it a day, man. Hell yeah. I want to be able to turn on my dehumidifier. I want to be able to sleep <laughs> with my sound app. And <laughs> yeah. Well, it's definitely the like turn a corner as far as like, I mean, it's not what I'm talking about was in the 70s and 80s and shit. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure there's still some of that. Of course, people are partying, but oh, like, yeah. it's definitely like, it's way more nowadays. Like people are aware of that now that like oh, you're yeah. going to burn out. So like, Oh yeah. I've heard so many of my favorite rock stars talk about how they balance this shit and how like you got to be like super careful about like what you're eating. Oh and yeah. What you're saying and like going to, you know, bigger bands they'll have uh, that can afford it. Like big bands, like, tool for example i'm thinking of they have like a fucking chef that tours with them that's badass that, that cooks for them and the crew you know basically you know it's, i'm sure it's some sort of buffet style oh whatever, yeah but you know it's like real healthy shit and right lots of guys like i know a lot of comedians uh touring they they have like a trainer that'll oh. go out with them on the road and shit so they'll work out for two hours a day every day to yeah. make sure you're yeah like, and that kind of shit definitely helps yeah if, if you're like just a local like hardcore band trying the Play, yeah, like, you don't have that. You go, yeah. you go to work at right. the fucking auto mechanic garage right. for ten yeah. hours, You're and then you like, fucking mm. we're uh, we're working up to getting a chef right now. We've got someone that comes <laughs> in yeah. halfway through the pod and microwave yeah. some hot, <laughs> hot yeah. microwave some hot pockets <laughs> for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. No, we get uh, what were those fucking things, dude? The snack, uh, not wrap snacks. What was the other thing we were eating? Oh, the uh, PB and J fucking. Oh, oh. the uh, <laughs> oh, the, cru- the oh, crust the thing, uncrustable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all it's a solid, steady diet. <laughs> uncrustable. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Burning the candle at both ends, man. You yeah. Do it. No, it is it is hard. It's hard even for like uh, for guys like us to be like you know I work full time and shit and then to try yeah. to like, even like do this or you come right. home and you produce or uh, you know i'm doing videos for bands and shit and it's well, like, yeah like it's i mean I did, today just alone like you know i had regular work or whatever and then i had i went and recorded with jay for about two hours and so i'm screaming and all that kind of shit and then yeah. drive here and then hang out for a while and then drive back like yeah. that's a lot of it's shit to do in one day uh-huh. but like and it's fun and, and but like i couldn't imagine doing that every single day yeah. and then still like being you know on point I'd, yeah. I'd start to play a lot more easy listening. Just so I can... <laughs> I'm more Michael Bolton than That's the right. next one. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's a labor of love, but when you've got the droves of fans that we do, you know, it's enough to, to get you out of bed in the morning for yeah, sure. The people demand this yeah. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's what keeps me going. <laughs> the letters we got from YouTube the couple of weeks that we were off because of holiday, man, they're just like, we have not seen a drop this staggering since Rogan left the platform. Fuck like, yeah. when is Dangerville coming back? <laughs> the people demand oh man it. do you listen to a lot of podcasts at all i do uh i actually listen to a lot of um my girlfriend got me into a lot of the um like crime junkie yeah uh, stuff like that she was my to favorite it. murder yep i yep, was super kind of... big on that one that came out for, for yep. a good couple of years i was a big pa- my favorite pa- murder past fan. those like i never really get it into a lot of it because i i'm never in one spot long enough to listen to them long enough yeah like uh I, I've listened to your guys's. Colt has a podcast. Um, there's another couple of them that I've like listened to too. That are just like a lot of them have like local bands and shit like that. Um, there was one I was on a while ago. Uh, God, what the hell was it? Oh, there's one that's called Speak the Unspeakable, and that's oh, a dude that's from cool. Muskegon, and he he talks about like suicide awareness and things oh, like that with okay. people. So that's really really cool. Um, yeah, there's another one called Suicide Noted. I've been on a lot of them for that have to do with like mental health and stuff like gotcha. that. After I That's put out cool. the compilation, a lot of people right. I got connected with them and stuff. Um, 
So I listen to a lot of those ones. I like a lot of the ones that are like trying to teach you something and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of the other, but a lot of the other stuff, uh, I do if I can't, if I have time. Like yeah. if I'm going for a long drive, like I might throw up like the Jasta one or something like that, and maybe try to listen to some new shit or, uh, yeah, stuff like that. Maybe last podcast on the left or something mm-hmm. like that. But yeah, that's good shit. But yeah, I like uh, I like pretty much everything. I mean, yeah. I'll go drive and listen to fucking stand up comedy. I mean, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I love comedy podcasts. I listen to a lot of them because uh, what I do at work, a lot of it's building websites and shit. So it's just kind of like, I don't, you know, part of it's blocking out what's going on around me and also just kind of like, I don't know, getting in the zone, getting in your own zone a little bit. And oh, yeah. Stuff. So like, I'll, I'll play through a lot of shit, dude. A lot of Rogan, a lot of fucking, uh, I listen to a lot of Andrew Schultz podcast now. Uh, just whatever, fucking. I like Tim Dillon. He's controversial, I guess. Some people don't <laughs> like him, but I do. So, like, so whatever. Bill Burr's show is good. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. Bill Burr's comedians. really, really good yeah. too. Um, my my girlfriend watches a lot of that. Uh, what is that? Uh, MX three or it's the one the, the God. What is it? It's the one with the the gamers and stuff like that. Where I th- I'm trying to think what it is. Uh, God shit can't remember they always have like i know like rhett and link have been on there from like good mythical morning and shit like that the guy that's on it his name is ethan okay i don't remember what the podcast is called but her and brandon watch that shit religiously and so they're always saying random things to each other and i don't know what the fuck they're saying <laughs> but it's from the podcast yeah and, yeah and brandon started it like he said he's like yeah pizza is actually very nutritious and i was like okay I don't know what the fuck that means. And then I found out that it's from the podcast because right. then I said it around my girlfriend just because he kept saying it around me. And she's like, oh, you watch that? I was like, I don't know what the fuck that's from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm old. I don't even understand half this shit. I mean, I think Jay was saying some shit was like, he's like, oh, yeah, that song is chronic as fuck. Uh, I didn't know what the fuck that meant. Oh, and I'm straight edge. So I, 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 you know, I didn't know it means really good weed now. But like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm walking around I'm like, oh, yeah, that food is chronic as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're too young for that. That's yeah. fucking, uh, yeah, that one's an old school one. <laughs> There's a whole other lingo, dude. Speaking of, I saw this perfect timing. I got to get into this a little bit. So, Apparently, Lake Michigan University every year, or Lake Superior State University, rather, they do this whole thing where they like pull people all over the world to come up with the words that should be banished for the next year. Like, lame words that people are sick of. That's pretty funny. So, they had 1,500 people get right in, like all across the US, New Zealand, as far as like Namibia. Uh, and, or Namib- <laughs> yeah, Namibia, yeah, yeah. hardest word gotcha. ever to say. <laughs> so they came up with this list, right? The 10 they've got that need to be banished for this year. Goat, which I think we can all agree on. Is like the goat, like, like the greatest goat, of all greatest time. Greatest of all time. Yeah. Everybody having 38 different fucking yeah. goats. I'm all set on that. Yeah. Inflection point, quiet quitting, which is a super new, super lame one. Quiet quitting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gaslighting, hate me some gaslighting. Yeah, gaslighting's kind of In full yeah, agreement on yeah. that. Annoying. Moving forward, pretty lame. Although uh, also yeah, yeah, not yeah. just a single word, but... Amazing. Does that make sense? Irregardless. Absolutely. Well, irregardless is not a real not word. Not a word. Right? No. But everybody uses it. Yep. <laughs> and it is what it is to round out. The I list. say it's that all the time. Yep. I mean, it is what it is, dude. The you president know, did this hilarious <laughs> speech teeing it up and he fucking mixed everything in. He's like, oh, our, our nominators insisted, our arts and liberals, uh, faculty judges concur the banished words of the blah 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 <laughs> go to tan them out to gaslighting does that make sense regardless <laughs> moving forward it is what it is an absolutely amazing inflection point of purpose of this ineptitude that overtakes many mouths and fingers i was like this guy fucking that's, rules yeah. so that's fucking hilarious the yeah. gaslighting's on there because uh, another you know because my girlfriend's younger than me she's younger than me by i think it's six or seven years and so she understands i like she was she was like yeah just making sure you're, you know you're not gaslighting me fucking with me and i was like i don't know what the fuck that means <laughs> i didn't know what it was until like a month ago i'm just like what yeah. are we talking and, about and so yeah. she went to bring it up later and i was like i promise i'm not fire burning you and she was like fire burning you and i was like <laughs> she's like you mean gaslighting and i'm like fuck i'm old and i was like i can pretend to be young or the same age as you most of the time but you say this shit like i don't even know what on fleek meant when it came out 
somebody, somebody actually, it was Jay's wife. She was like, your eyebrows are on fleek. And I'm like, does that mean they're bad or good? That, like, yeah, that one I don't even know. <laughs> so just in really case know. somebody <laughs> at home listening uh, doesn't know what that one is, because yeah, yeah. I definitely yeah. do. What me, is uh, what me, is on me, fleek? It means they're on point, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, well, that was good. At least she wasn't saying, your eyebrows look like shit. <laughs> There's a bunch <laughs> of fucking weird ones, man, that's like, holy shit. Like, I'm all set on that. We got enough words. Can we not make up new, yeah, right, lame, yeah. more bullshit terms for stuff that's already taken care of? Oh, well, then you can't say you can't say retarded anymore. No, <laughs> no. Can we no. get back to the classics? I know. Come, Come on, on. <laughs> breaking my balls. Yeah, it's, it's fucked up. There's a lot of things you can't say no more. Yeah. There's a lot of things. I mean, I, I'm just I, kidding. I don't care. But yeah, this is funny. I, I, it's weird. I don't say a lot of that stuff anymore. Probably because I am on the spectrum. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm Push sure it. I'm canceled immediately even just for saying that. <laughs> this podcast has been demonetized. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a thousand of dollars Joe Rogan just pulls right that now. sponsorship. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I, it's weird. There's a lot of things that you can't say. There's a lot of things. I mean, half the shit that you can't say now are all words that I didn't know existed anyway. So I'm oh. effect, not affected by it anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, can't say gaslight. That's fine. I didn't know what the fucking meant a month ago anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah, that is annoying. I do say it is what it is, though. I'm not. Yeah. It's like what we say. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do. I, I say that at work all the time. Like some shit will happen. And I'm like, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. I, got, I got my handful yeah. of lame ass cliches. Yeah, I'm always indeed. falling back yep. on. That'll happen. I'm a big fan of that'll mm-hmm. happen. Yep. I think some of that shit's like Midwest kind of, too. There's like certain phrases like, uh, oh, fuck. No, it's fucking. It was right there on the tip of my tongue. That's probably one I shouldn't say anymore either. That's uh, <laughs> that's number eleven on the list. Right? <laughs> Didn't get that far down. But. Living the dream. That's oh, what yeah. it is. Uh, hey, yeah. how you doing? Living yeah. the dream. That's <laughs> like a Midwest thing. <laughs> it's it's so funny. Like me, because you know me, Jay, and Adam, and Colt, and Brandon. All of us all have like a different range of like ages, and so random people will say random shit. Like Adam, every time he was talking about work, and he's like. Jay and uh, Adam would be talking about work. It's like, so how how the salt mine's treating you? Shit like that just because... I don't know, that's what some old people used to say <laughs> when they'd be talking about. Well, and I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about, salt mines? You work at a computer. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's old people shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That, I, was, I was like, my job's chronic as fuck. But <laughs> <laughs> so my typing's on fleek. But yeah, no, nah, man, it's, it's crazy. But I, I gotta admit, I didn't know what on fleek meant. No, so, nah, yeah. yeah, me neither. I, I mean, Jay's wife uh, is a lot younger than me, too, or I don't know if she's a, she might be the same age as me, but you know, they're all on you know, on track and knowing all that shit. But no, it's funny since I started dating uh, my current person, uh, she's taught me all that lingo and shit. I think so much of that shit catches on because all the different, you know, TikTok and fucking Instagram yeah. and all oh, that yeah. shit. Not on that. Like its you own little like, lingo. Oh, and I'm yeah. not on most of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, dude, I, I don't, I know that Jay keeps on telling me to get on TikTok because, I mean, they've been blasting out some, like, like uh, Tony Capo is one of the guys that he always does a lot of stuff with. He, like, he blasted off on TikTok, I guess, and got a shit ton of, like, uh, traffic on one of his things like fifteen thousand or something yeah, like that yeah and then, uh, my tiktok game sucks i'm like i don't have enough time in the day to put that no. much effort yeah. in right now i fucking hate TikTok. yeah dude. i'm not a fan yeah. I'm, I'm, and i also question how real those numbers are on yeah. that shit you know like you never fucking hearing something know. about that the other day too yeah. where they like likely push a ton of traffic and followers at first especially yeah. to get you hooked like oh, yeah. specifically uh, on tiktok yeah yeah i tend to stick to twitter like mainly you know you can find yeah. me at the dangerville <laughs> podcast <laughs> right we just got on or twitter t- tweet tweet at me at dangerville pod you know just saying you can <laughs> tweet <Dude>. me <laughs> I, I think i've had you a, can twitter me at uh you know. i've had like a i think a, a twitter for iron sharpens iron for like a year now i think i put like two i think i literally actually made that just to talk shit to the singer trapped like <laughs> yeah. just because which is fair uh, like he was talking shit i think i forgot what band he was arguing with uh it was one he was arguing with uh, Ice T, I think, or some shit like that. <laughs> and Ice T is like, "Who the fuck are you? <laughs> you don't yeah. argue with Ice T, no. dude." And he was like, "They're like, he was talking shit to all these like death metal bands, saying that they didn't take any talent." And I'm like, "Dude, you have one song." And so you know, to be an asshole, of course, I think I made one and just talked shit about some of his stuff. And I don't even know what that he song. Responded, is. He responded. I can't back. even name a trap. Head, Headstrong. 
has oh, dropped. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 Can't step up to T. You don't want to get on T's bad side. That, that's I'll right. That yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. But man, holy shit. Have you shit. seen Lep 5, Lep in the yeah. Hood? The guy's got a fucking temper, gentlemen. <laughs> but that, I mean, fuck. I, I do like Instagram and Facebook, and that's just because they're linked. So I can do one and post it to both. Yeah. And then I don't have to do anything else anymore. Yeah. Just, but yeah, past that, man, I don't have that much brain power to be on my phone that much i start to lose time i used to yeah. all the time i get sucked into my phone and be on it like because you know facebook will say oh, like yeah. how many hours you're on there it's you fucking know, it's just fucking dude. scrolling yeah. for like three three hours a day and i'm like what yeah. the fuck am i doing on there i could have yeah. you know i could i could have had sex and like prepared two meals within the period that i was just on like that. 300 <laughs> times <Yeah. dude. laughs> instead of watching a chick do squats on reels for uh -huh. 10 minutes over and over that shit's creeping up now those little short things oh. on facebook I'm like, oh yeah what is this that, why am that's i getting this tiktok basically is they're yeah. all trying to do you know they're all whatever getting on that fucking bag yeah. and like the youtube's got youtube shorts and it is and the yeah. most shameless shit i've ever seen oh yeah it's literally ridiculous. just bending over like Ooh, whoops, well, and it's drop. weird because like it's supposed to be what you view has become suggested but i swear to god it, like yeah. if you're in certain like uh age brackets or sexes like it automatically just puts some shit in there oh because because yeah. yeah, i'm just like I, I was like just looking at it and and my my girl was like looking at it and she was like you don't even watch these videos. How the hell do these end up in your in your thing? I'm like, because Zuckerberg. That's why. <laughs> that fucker is like, he's just trying to get us into some shit. Yeah. But no, man, I don't know. I don't I'm, I don't do that too much stuff on there just because it's... It's a rabbit hole, man. It yep. really is. It's a punishing rabbit hole. But Yeah. Yeah, fuck TikTok, dude. They're trying to ban it again, I heard. Really? Yeah, because you remember how they... Uh, we talked about it a little bit like last week, but because like, Trump actually banned it. Or had it banned no. right when it came out. No it shit. It was like it was banned for like a couple weeks. Weird. Because well, because it's a fucking it's literally a Chinese fucking infiltration device is what it actually is. Oh no it's, shit. It's literally, dude, uh the terms and services and shit, like it's beyond you can sketchy, they dude. can like huh. get all of your data off of like anything you're connected to, regardless of if you're on it or not. And it's also a tool that they're using literally to dumb down America. Yeah, it seems like I mean some of the stuff that's on there, I'm just like I mean, you know, it's like that on Facebook and everything too, but it's worse on TikTok, honestly. Yeah. Cause it's a different like it's a different age group. Right. You know? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, and that's I mean, I, it's weird. Like, I had a family thing the other day uh, for Christmas or whatever, and I see, like, a lot of the, like, some of the family members, they have, like, these kids are, like, six, you know, five, have, like, their own phones and are scrolling through all that shit. Damn. I was like, yeah. I don't think, I couldn't imagine, if I would have done that, I don't think I would have ever wanted to pick up an instrument. And, right. And I don't think. That's exactly. Just, yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're the only kids not playing with any of the other kids, too. So I'm just like, uh, yeah. I'm like, maybe. I don't know. They tap Take that away. into everything, dude. They tap into the vanity. They tap yep. into the five second attention spans that everybody has. It's, now, it's crazy. Because yeah, I mean, for for me, I like. I'm like, I can understand having one for emergencies, but man, at a certain age. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Not, I thought you meant TikTok at first. <laughs> oh, I mean, you gotta have a TikTok got a emergency. TikTok emergency. Yeah. You would just have to get that no dance out. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> but, oh, God. Yeah, I think I just learned how to do it. What's that? Uh. Uh, flossing yeah 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 the the lady taught me how to do that so i'm pretty on point with my flossing <laughs> did uh, also my regular flossing too well, i've got good dental things <laughs> it, <laughs> and what if that's what you were just talking about like yeah i finally learned <laughs> you know like, my, I, my, my my dentist is fucking uh -huh. like, just static <laughs> I, I crush it on my tiktok video but the views just aren't there like i wouldn't probably it's like just fucking looking up timmy the tooth it's like jesus having yeah. flashbacks my brother used to watch all those fucking toddler programs but, yeah but yeah that, so i heard that uh they're thinking about fucking like uh I don't know the Biden administration or whatever is looking at it again. Like huh. we should not be allowing this because it's it's literally a fucking Chinese spy tool. And I mean, nothing surprises me. Yeah. I mean, I I mean we have like phones on us all the time. I I just automatically assume people are listening to everything we say. So yeah. I just say really yeah. fucked up shit when I'm by myself. So, <laughs> that, so that some if I'm a little off, they'll just leave me alone. But. <laughs> yeah, TikTok's particularly egregious in that. And then I heard also they say that in China. They like it's like completely different where it's all like 
pushing like education and fitness and shit like that to their youth. So like they're literally playing this long game of like fucking making Americans even stupider than we already are. It's all like like, accomplishment focus. You know, they're like trying to highlight people that are killing it and like really getting after it. Engineers and like shit like that. That's crazy. Uh I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, I mean, I don't know why they're trying. I mean, they're already, we already own millions of dollars anyways. And we buy their shit from them all the time. So, so I was yep. listening to this thing the other day. I don't know if you caught it. I think it was actually a Rogan episode, but he had this guy in that was like a sociologist slash economist, and this dude knows everything about everything. Was basically. it that Peter Zahn dude or something? Yeah, like that? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that guy was out of control. And his whole thing that he was going off of was basically that, like, within what did he say, ten years, China's just going to collapse because of all the. It was this whole thing. Yeah, like, it was awesome. Essentially, that yeah. yeah, it was super interesting. Like huh. basically. And I always thought they were like the world power and the numbers are there. So yeah. one, it sounds like they're faking a bunch of their population stuff. It's not yeah. as big as they've always said. Two, they're really aging out like demographically, it yeah, sounded like. Yeah, like the, yeah. huh. everybody's super old, like the next generations, you know, because they had all that population control yeah. stuff. Quit, going yeah, on. yeah, so like, oh, yeah. kids and we're fucking we're killing the daughters. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, man. You get into that and then all like the leadership gaps and stuff, you know, yeah, because like see, one, they're taking that. people out and just like anybody that's a threat to take over leadership, they take them out. Oh, yeah. And then with, you know, a lesser generation, obviously, you don't yeah. have as many potential good leaders to come up if the numbers are it's down. Fucking, it's pretty wild, dude. Yeah. It, it's nuts, man. I, all that, I have an uncle that he's always talking. He's like, I'm just going to move to Ireland. I'm just like, you know, maybe that's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stay away from, away from all of them. Somewhere that like Norway, Sweden, yeah. they seem to have it on yeah. lockdown. They a lot got of sunshine, they got happy good. bastards up there. It, 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 which is weird though, because then you got the black metal. So I like, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, yeah. I'm, just like <laughs> I'm like, I might like that. You can go in about and have your nice like yeah. atmosphere, and then, and then just go play just fucking go the fuck brutalist death right. metal. <laughs> and why burn your local church? A lot fine. of my favorite <laughs> bands are from fucking. From Sweden. Just eat some Norway, pickled herring, so. jam right. out to some burzum. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> yeah, man. Fucking, uh, are you a fan of Opeth? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, my uncle actually got me into metal when I was younger, and I think, oh, that, like, them, uh, even, like, Otep, like, he gave me a bunch, like, Strapping Young Lad and Otep, yeah. like, he gave me, like, a bunch of, like, randomness, and that was what really got me into, like metal in general and now is the one that wants to go to ireland so he yeah. likes metal too yeah ireland's not without its issues though i mean oh, yeah. they had the fucking you know the breaking off of northern ireland and all that oh, yeah. i don't think it's a big problem anymore but that was all we were there uh when brexit was happening and brexit was very much the same way it's divided regular ireland and northern ireland it's kind of like the division of like who's with the British and who's not essentially, right. and so like it was fucking weird there. And we were going into Northern Ireland, and we were kind of like, "What if this shit fucking happens?" <laughs> and we're in Northern Ireland, and they close the border. We stuck. wouldn't be able to get back to like get Damn, our flight and shit dude. out, you know. So like, that would fucking suck. that would be crazy, you know. I don't know, man. That, that that kind of shit scares me. I mean, I've had a lot of family and friends that all live in different areas, and. I haven't really traveled outside the country that much, honestly. I think I've only been outside the U.S. I think once. And it was to go to the Virgin Islands, so it's not like yeah. it was like, you know, too big of a change. Right, right, right. But I mean, I've only been to Ireland and Europe, so I haven't done like. I want to go to Ireland. Like we we're talking about, like uh, when we get married and for what we want to do for our honeymoon, we're talking about where we'd want to go, and uh, I'm. We're talking about wanting to go like to France or something like that, just because I've yeah. always wanted to go there. I mean, yeah. I've always wanted to see like Morrison's like headstone and shit like that. Just because uh, not the Mona Lisa. In just nah. second. Yeah, fuck all that stuff. <laughs> but, but, just Jim Morrison's grave. <laughs> no, I, I want to go there to sign it. But but no, like I want to go. I want to go see the other shit too. Of we're course, all yeah. we're, we're all big on like uh, historical shit, like, but we're yeah. also like big on art too because you know yeah. like, do like the graphic designing and stuff, yeah, and yeah. so you know. That's uh, me and her really hit it off when we first started talking. It's weird because there's some of the shit she says. I'm like, I would have said that, but you know, I never expect anybody else to ever say anything I say because I'm fucking weird. So <laughs> it's cool. We like we we like looking at doing a lot of shit like that. So it's kind of cool because I've always wanted to see Europe. I've always wanted to see other yeah. different places, oh, yeah. but never really had anybody that would want to go with me. So I'm kind of thinking that we might do that and kind of go through Europe. Yeah, um, I mean, you can do a couple if you go for like a couple weeks. You can you can see a lot because like you know it's 
the countries are small as states. You can here. Drive. Yeah, like, it's like three, four yeah, hours. You can, in which yeah, that's, that's country all together. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we were talking about maybe doing something like that. I mean, I have my a couple cousins. Uh, she was in the military uh, with her husband, and they all lived in Japan for a while. And they nice, they nice. loved living over there. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind going and visiting that either, just because. Yeah. I mean, they said it's really fucking neat over there, just yeah. all the different stuff they have and even just the food and everything else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Skoke, our fucking, one of our best friends and old roommates who's probably listening, lived there for two years or maybe more. He might have even been there longer. But, yeah, he said it's fucking wild, man. Like, it's just the culture. It's so different. Oh, yeah. Know? I can imagine. Yeah. And, I mean, a lot of people, all, I mean, I either say they loved it or they hated it that I've, I've talked to, but most of them all say they really like it. So I like to go there. I've never even been to fucking Canada. I mean, yeah. I don't know if I'm missing out on much, but Canada's awesome, man. I mean, it's it's it? super. I mean, it is really everybody is super nice. Yeah. It's clean. That's uh cool. like I loved fucking like if you go like go through Detroit and into Canada like and then you go like into New York basically. There's like that's kind of like cheater way to get to New York, you know. Okay. You go through London, Ontario, or whatever and it's fucking awesome dude i loved i thought it was just a cool city and like That's i cool. don't know canada's pretty dope toronto is supposed to be badass yeah. it's supposed to be like a pretty futuristic like awesome yeah New i'd like York to go to montreal city. or any of that shit would be because because yeah i mean it's like i just I, I i'm really big on like sightseeing and, and now as i get older and i feel better too like i actually yeah. like like hiking and like going right. out and just seeing like things like that so I would like to see some of like the waterfalls and all that kind of stuff like that, and mm-hmm. even get in the photography parts for like that kind of shit. Yeah, that's a big thing of what what we do as Susan and I do is I'll go. Uh, it get, the photography is like an excuse to like you got to take that hike to get to that waterfall, yep. you know, kind of thing. So mm-hmm. like, so yeah, well, I'll do a ton of photography when we go on trips and shit. We'll yeah. go on a lot of road trips and just fucking do that. Basically Hell she'll yeah. get pissed. Cause I'll be like, got to pull over. I need to take a picture. And I'm turning around and shit. Whipping you know, in the like, middle of the road, uh-huh. smacking a deer almost. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, yeah, I'm that, that, as I get older, I'm like, it's kind of cool. Cause we're kind of finding out things that we like to do together. And some of it's uh shit I never could do before. And, or we just didn't have people to do it with, so yeah. it's kind of cool. Her dad does a lot of that shit. He'll travel. He like retired from the military, so he'll go to all these different water, like waterfalls and just uh, yeah, yeah. shit like that. So yeah, you can just go on a road trip like to the fucking northeast, dude. This is fucking awesome. You know, huh. like take the road trip because then you can stop whenever you want and do your photography oh, yeah. and shit. And like, like I've road tripped out to Maine a couple of times and road yeah, trip's underrated ask. that's the way road to trips go, yeah fucking flying's awesome, convenient dude. but flying is you not get that convenient. fucking car no. flying sucks dude last balls. time i yeah, uh, last time it. i flew i fucking hated it because hate it was during it was like while covid was kind of dipping down in numbers a little bit i went to uh, that furnace fest in uh alabama last year and we flew down there and i had like a sinus infection because literally all of the shows were all in just it was at Sloss Furnaces in Alabama, and so was, you're just compacted with dirt around you. Oh. And so everybody's moshing, and we're all jumping on top of each other and moshing and everything else. And so all that dirt, I think, just gave me a sinus infection. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we're all wearing masks on the plane. And oh, we, you can't fucking breathe. You can't and, breathe, oh, and, I, and I couldn't breathe out my nose. And all of a sudden, as soon as my ears went to pop, just like, boom, sinus infection right to my nose. My ears are clogged, and I'm just like sitting on the plane. I'm like, I fucking can't hear. Miserable. I can't Hurdle, smell. I, can't. Uh, I, feel like shit. I was like, I talk. I don't know whether I'm there, like Helen or... Keller just wondering what's going <laughs> right, on, man. I was like, holy shit, man. And so after that, I was like, man, I'd rather drive. At least then yeah. I know that I can be in my car yep. and I, yep. even or just rent a damn vehicle. Yep. But yeah, that's the last time I flew, and I'm like, man, that's just supposed to be more convenient. This sucks. It's, it's not with the fucking the way the airports and shit are, dude. Like, yeah. I flew a lot uh, for probably about three, four years for work. I was flying around quite a bit, and uh, it just got fucking old, dude. Like, it it's weird. It's also weirdly addicting. Yeah, it's weird, man. And like, there was a time when like. It's almost like when you get off into the airport, you're like fucking ready to like go and like get on the next thing. Yeah. Or something. It's fucking weird, but like also like I just got fucking burned out and I'm just like the airports suck. Oh yeah. And like this is so brutal and it's hard on your body and you yep. just like you feel like dog shit. And, and it, I mean, and I get it if you're trying to go, obviously, you know, you're not going to take a, your car to Europe. Yeah. But I mean, like, yeah. so it has its times, but I'm like, shit, if I'm just going to go to Florida, I'd almost rather just take a it's few extra so days. It's so much easier to just drive, dude. Right. And then it's yeah. like you can take your time and actually kind of see visually, yeah. like, 
and it's some like, cool shit on the way down. If you got to take a know? shit, you can stop. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, like, oh man, I'm, I'm thirsty or I'm tired or whatever. Like, you know, like you got the option to like, I could pull over right here. And do I remember this, when so. I was going to the Virgin Islands, I, I mean, I was, I was a big dude. And so I was already like, I, we got bumped up the first class somehow. I don't remember how. Nice. But I'm sitting with the glass and shit like that from my awesome Coke. And I fell asleep, and that shit just shattered oh. everywhere all over the floor. And everybody in the first class, you know, that with that had money and paid for the tickets, they're just looking at me like, "Who is this yeah, motherfucker?" Who's this fucking idiot? <laughs> it's up here. I was like, "You are not first beard, class like, material." I had like a fucking beard down to here at the time with long hair and like some hardcore shirt. I'm just like waking up. I was like, "Oh man, it's sleep apnea and shit." Oh yeah, dude, it was, and it was, shit, dude. They're just it, like this motherfucker. Fucker, <laughs> but dude, it, it was it was it was fucking rough. Yeah, I mean, yeah, flying stinks, dude. I'll just, uh, yeah, but yeah, it, it's fucking nuts, man. I don't know. I I want to see some cool shit for sure. That's yeah. what I used to love about playing in bands and shit like that. I mean, it's still what I love about playing in bands too. Is like, you go to a new bar, even if it's you know like turnstiles. If you've never been there, you play with some cool bands that you've never met before. It's like, uh fuck you made a new new friend possibly or yeah. whatever or i mean like in many cases maybe even somebody that you might jam with in a band later on or something yeah. like that yeah, yeah and so i mean i don't know as i've gotten older i look at things more of like day-by-day experiences yeah and uh you know don't worry about planning things out ahead too far or having too much of a, a game plan for your music and shit like that just enjoy the moment and have yeah, fun and i feel like that's sure. if how much you almost got to do all of life Within reason, you know, make sure you can pay your bills and shit like that. Yeah. And, but, but yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, that's kind of seat of your pants is a good way to, to live, I guess. Yeah, I yeah, agree. Sure. Yeah. Trying to fucking like, I don't know, day to day or like, yeah, live in the moment a little bit. So. You get going right. to that long game plan, I mean, that shit gets overwhelming. Right. In a hurry. Mm-hmm. And then to your point, you think you've got this whole game plan baked yep. out. Inevitably, that's going to get thrown to shit in like well, I've two just, months. I've just seen just so like, many people God. like that I work with that I like, they retire and they're just like, oh yeah, now I'm going to retire. And then all of a sudden, boom, something happens and then they can't even enjoy life because like physically they can't. I'm like, shit, you worked your whole life to be oh, able to man, retire. Worst, dude. And I'm just like, fuck, I just, I'm okay with that. But I'm like, I'd much rather live to, you know, make money to live rather than live to make money. Yeah, so. amen. Hey, kitty. Did you hey, buddy. hey, buddy. Hey, cute little kitty boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you know, man. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I found that uh, this week... I really found myself to be out of touch with what's going on around me in the world. I would imagine it's a little difficult to it's keep hard. up when you're trying to do all the house stuff and it moving is, into a new moving, crib. It's yeah. hard to stay on top of things. So I was hoping that maybe you could tell me what's going on in the world. Let's see if we can get you set up here, guy. Okay, okay. Oh, wait. Fuck. Oh, where is boo. It? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the one saving grace of this whole segment. It's out of commission. Wait for it. Wait for it. <sighs> No, where is it? What? Oh. oh, Jamie, can we get uh, can we get the sounder hooked up here? No sample loaded. What the fuck? Brutal. Error. Error. Oh, damn, dude. Oh, what was that? Is that an Akai? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to get some of well, our. Well, we'll edit that in. Some of <laughs> our finest team on that post production. We'll get, get it all set. What, what is it usually? Technical difficulties. Do? It plays the uh, our news of the world intro nice. thing there. So, yeah. Imagine it's there. <laughs> well, it's a lackluster the, uh, start, and it's not going to go up from there. In a though, new studio here. <laughs> <laughs> Working out the kinks. All right, so first up on the docket, we've got an Indian man detained for unruly behavior with a woman on an airline flight. Oh, shit. So police have arrested an airline passenger after he urinated on a woman in business class <laughs> during a flight from New York to India. Some people pay for that. Indeed. <laughs> right? I uh, pay for that. Fellow <laughs> passengers who witnessed the event commented that it was the worst decision making they'd seen by an Indian man since M. Night Shyamalan opted to cast Jaden Smith in After Earth. <laughs> Damn. Wow, okay. <laughs> After Earth. Terrible M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> movie. Night. It stinks. I never heard M. of that Night, you fight. Oh, it was the one with Will Smith and Jaden Smith, some fucking yeah. post-apocalyptic nope. mumbo. It was, was not, not, it was not it good. It stinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just bad. Wow. Did you catch the uh, the old 
M. Night Shyamalan movie. It's actually, called Old, by the I way. I did. I didn't think that one was too bad. I thought it was all I, right. I thought it was pretty actually, yeah. good, yeah. I was, I was surprised because, I mean, I don't know. You know there's always the twist. Yeah. And uh, I didn't think it really had too much of a twist other than like i mean i kind of saw most of some of it coming but a baby old. twist yeah. yeah kind yeah but it was, it was <laughs> i've never heard of this I i'm not up on my m night sorry yeah. it's on uh, hbo let's check it out it's yeah. worth a watch all worth right. a watch all right. all right what else you got so next up we've got oldest living pearl harbor survivor marks his 105th birthday holy shit pretty shit. awesome so a uh, flag waving and myers line the streets to greet and congratulate joseph eskenazi for his previous heroism in surviving Pearl Harbor and to celebrate his 105th birthday. Damn, that's cool. Yeah. Um, Eskenazi did not fight in the war, but was one of the few men to make it through the entire three-hour and three-minute disaster directed by Michael Bay and live to tell the tale. <laughs> wow. Back-to-back <laughs> movie news, gentlemen. Somehow. That's, Pearl Harbor, I, it stinks I, at I an alarming rate. I did see that coming, actually. That's Ooh. a good one. A good Somehow one. close so bad. to the same. <laughs> also, I would be remiss to not point out the irony of this dude's name, Eskenazi. Last four liter- or, uh, letters, literally N A Z I. Nazi. Which I, uh, it means a Nazi. Damn. It means I'm a Nazi. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> All right. So, Florida manatee deaths drop, but starvation still a concern. Okay. You know where this one's going. You know exactly where this one's going. No, uh, no Shyamalan twist on this bad boy. I can assure you, for uh, avid listeners of the cast, manatee deaths dropped in 2022 from a record high the year before. But Florida wildlife officials said this, uh, Wednesday that chronic starvation remains a major concern. However, not all are convinced. I don't agree with the assertion, and I'm shocked that they made such a broad blanket comment about an entire species. Most of us are doing just fine when it comes to finding food, commented Brandon Fraser. <laughs> Because he's fat. All right. He's the whale, not the manatee. <laughs> Close enough that. <laughs> I was loving that manatee time. I was debating between Lizzo, Brandon Fraser, yeah, and some of our other Christy friends there. Yeah, we got to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, save some Chrissy Alley yeah. bangers. She, she was hot in that uh, movie with Tim Allen uh, when they were like all in the. Ah, I got over I'm like, I'm sure. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, oh, I was God, like, I forgot about I was, that. I was like, yeah. damn, she looked pretty good. I mean, I mean, this yeah. is like me when I was like 14 or 13. I mean, no, that's so, I mean, I was, thought anything was, was the, hot. She was the good back in sure. Cheers. You cheers know, days. Was, yeah. Yeah. But I was, I was like, you know, I would watch her churn butter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what really got it done for me from Cheers is that Rhea Perlman. Oh man, is mm. she the? Uh... No, she's not attractive. Yeah. Guy. Okay, I know who that is. Also, she might not have actually been in Cheers in retrospect. I have no idea think she was is she the one that married uh danny devito i don't know damn man dude. i don't know that'd I don't... be a mind blower and a huge call if you're right on that one i hope so i don't know i think i just made that up sounds convincing though i would google <laughs> it far it. too lazy <laughs> <laughs> we'll get our uh, we'll get our fact checking department on that after the fact oh actually the cat's coming down the stairs right now to let us know all right, I got one more piece of wow. shit here. This one's been on the list forever. And I was like, yeah, it's terrible. I'm going to go ahead and throw it in. Short news week, short week to crank stuff out. So no time like the present. Missing dog walks into police station. <laughs> so a missing canine found its way into a police station. It was lost. It walked in there on its own accord and curled up like it was waiting for help. Pretty crazy. Unfortunately, as the dog was black and wearing a chain, officers assumed it was a threat and instinctively shot it on sight. <laughs> That's yeah. the best one. Dude. I had that one. That was fucking. Up. I had that one cooked up for the Swanson cast when he didn't make it in. I was like, "Yeah, I'll back burn this one for a future day." Dude, I, I, I have a cop thing that's pretty funny. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, Christmas just happened and all that fun jazz, and so. Uh, my family, like, you know, they share what each other wants. They make, like, an Amazon wish list or whatever. Yeah. And just to fuck with my mom, uh, I put an ACAB uh, shirt on there. And it actually has, like, the Hamburglar, like, running, like he's running away from something. And then it says ACAB uh, across it. And my, I don't know if you get, know, know what that means. It means all no. cops are bastards. Okay. Oh, no. And, yeah, and yeah, so no. it's, like, running away from them. <clears throat> and it's supposed to just kind of be a funny joke. And then, you know, cops. But like, <laughs> but my mom bought it for me, not knowing what it meant, and so I'm opening it up in front of my very, very re- like super hardcore Republican grandma and grandpa, and they're like, "That's a cute shirt." <laughs> <laughs> and my grandpa sits down his like his his beer like on his like 
like support like the local police department like coaster oh, literally man. as i'm open oh it, that's and uncomfortable i'm just like i'm like yeah it's a band <laughs> <laughs> nice. that's actually what i thought it was i've never heard of that oh either. Yeah. yeah oh yeah 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 it's a it's an old thing oh okay but yeah, it was it was fucking hilarious my, my mom was like I didn't know that. My mom, my mom is so fucking innocent too. Like I got that. Like she got me like black flag shirts and a bunch of other shit. But that one was pretty fucking hilarious. Opening just like the irony and all of it. I'm like that's that's fucking great. Having said all this, I would like the record to reflect the fact that I am very pro cap. Huge fan of the police force. True story. Out there doing yeoman's work. Shout out I'm, police officers. I'm a, I'm a fan of some of you. I can't believe, dude. <laughs> The whole defund the police thing is among the craziest yeah. shit yeah. I have ever heard. Like, do we really want a bunch of fucking... Well, what's weird is that a lot of that got misconstrued, too. I mean, like... Because what some of them wanted, they want special programs for, like, mental health counseling, like the down talk things. Yeah. But instead, that got, like, all blown up and, like, thrown to the curve... And that just became the one thing. You know, no different than like when there was the 99% thing that was going on. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, you got all these people that are running around saying all this stuff and they they make their own movement look stupid. Yeah. Because yeah, they don't yeah. know what the hell yeah. they're talking about, which is the case. You know, I mean, for, you know, you got all these different like, uh, you know, I don't know, different like just rallies and shit that were going on in Grand Rapids for the cop that shot, uh, you know, I, yeah, I forgot yeah. what the hell they're going on. But yeah. Just for different shit like that, and it's like you always have people that ruin the movement, and then you have people yeah. that make it better. No different than you have shitty people in every yeah. profession. But when you yeah, get you enough know. people, there's going to be, yeah. All right. Yeah. Ann Arbor's got a big thing. I just oh, saw yeah. there were these two people that did like a sit-in type deal as a protest or whatever yeah. to do a similar thing to, I think, what you're talking about, where it's like basically they've got caseworkers and mental health workers yeah. that would be called for certain things that are right. perceived to be like nonviolent crimes yep. or whatever. Like somebody's spazzing out and right. sending the cops after him. They get these people in to yep. talk to them, see what's going on. Yeah. Like try because and that, that would help the situation. Cause, because otherwise, I mean, cops are only trained certain procedures when it comes to like deescalating people or, and I mean, even if, you know, somebody has a mental health condition, they don't know exactly how to deal with that. And they're so low on on cops that you know they're all, they go through them a lot too, so I mean I think that that would help and I think that that's what part of it was for sure because um, even when I was in Chicago like one of the guys who was playing with us was a police officer and he was like yeah we, we're not trained to do certain things but yeah. we're still the ones that are called to go do it right um, yeah for sure I'm for sure like, I'm like oh well, yeah I'm, for if I want to go see a therapist to work on my mental health I'm not going to go to somebody that's you know, specializing in something that has nothing to do with like, you know, if I'm if I'm really really bad and codependent, I don't want to go to somebody that's talking about something completely different. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna go to the person that tries to teach me to eat well, to try to teach me to not be codependent on somebody. Right. But yeah, I don't know. I think that that would that would help. But yeah, that every movement's always fucked because yeah, yeah. we as people can never agree on anything yeah. to actually work together. It starts as something yeah. and then like as some fucking other idiots co-opted or well, then and then, a different yeah. thing on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Ex yep. that's what I was going to uh, say. Exactly. Yeah, right? Social like media the, makes the most crazy. salacious headlines get oh, picked yeah. and then yep. people shoehorn in on one little aspect oh, of something, yeah. yep. bastardize the overall, you know, tone of yep. what it's supposed to be. I mean, be that's why I like every it election, divided. it's, it's yeah. like, it's always fucked because even like, I don't know, the last like, like how do how are these the people we have to pick from even just like that last michigan election i'm like what the fuck yeah, literally yeah. really i'm like i mean it's because nobody wants to do it anymore. <laughs> right <laughs> well like to it's like such a thankless fucking job right. it's, it's yeah, fucked you know? i mean like like literally you know you have all these people like this that tudor dixon was running or whatever and yeah and, and she literally lives like five minutes from my house Oh, no shit. Yeah. She's from like North Muskegon or like Grand Haven and all these different areas. She's like literally from there. She gets her hair done at like the same salon that like my mom gets her hair done at. Oh, snap. Dude. But I'm like, she's talking about how much she loves her community. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck you are. <laughs> and, like, right. and I'm like, I'm literally like we are involved in like mental health things in local churches. And I'm like, where you been, bro? I don't see you yeah, in these community right. serve projects. But that's, yeah. I think, the way with most politicians is. Yeah. Same thing with, I mean, 
our governor. I mean, I'd never I, heard of her before yeah. either. I mean, all these people come from somewhere. Right. Whatever. I'm not paying attention. Either, right. So like, I just, I'm like, man, I'd much rather see like, I mean, I go to church pretty much every single Sunday. I'm like, I get, I see more positive change in places like that when they're actually trying to make a difference. Like, you know, like food trucks or, uh, right. When they have like, uh, we have a, had a guy do like, a um, semicolon Sunday where he came through and he talked about like mental health and, uh, QPR training so that you can learn how to talk somebody down from a suicidal like uh, event and stuff like that. I'm like, I see more value in any of that kind of shit than right, what right. I ever see in politics. Well, or, generally, those people legitimately give a shit if they're right. devoting their time to it. They're sure. probably not getting paid a damn red cent at the end of the day to yeah, do it right. oftentimes, whereas the politicians got to be the person, you know, doing the glad handing and making it seem right. like they give a flying fuck. Right. Whereas they and that's, do and it's crazy because of how polarized, like, politics and all that shit. I mean, even just like if you're like, I don't like that, like, musician, people are like, how can you not like that musician? You're fucking stupid. And I'm like, I just don't like that musician it's crazy how fast people just want to argue especially now that social media yeah, is like yeah, oh, that's yeah. so really prominent it. it's like i mean fuck everybody argues over the dumbest shit i'm like if you would just concentrate on one positive thing your whole life would be better yeah instead of concentrating on trying to dig up dirt on something stupid I mean, it's a whole different deal now man now you've got those people scouring oh you yeah know, oh this person tweeted one thing oh yeah look at uh, 20 james, years look ago at when they Gunn. were 16 yeah. years old and it's yep. like dude yeah like james gunn side, they they, like, they took him off the, the guardians of the galaxy movie yeah, and then he yeah. made the suicide squad and then they finally they brought him back and all now that he's shit. the head of dc so yeah, he's doing that. okay <laughs> i'm just like man that shit's fucking nuts yeah i mean and the same thing with the i mean some people yeah they, they got kind of fucked like uh, what was this uh Chris Hardwick or whatever he got taken off like the talking yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, because uh, his, his girlfriend, his girlfriend or ex girlfriend made some kind of bullshit claim about him, and yep. it wasn't true. Yeah, oh, and wow. he it was just there was a lot of casualties of like you know whatever Me Too and stuff, right. and not like that didn't kind of need to happen or whatever. But right. there was it got taken too far, and there was other shit that was just like, come on, or right, well, just some that's, fucking. It got to the point where people didn't need to have any evidence, yeah, for or some of it, and I'm believe like, all women. Yeah. It's like, right. oh, okay, there's no crazy fucking women out there, like really. Well, an accusation <laughs> is different, right? Right. Like, I mean, if you're well, going to go it, to the lengths of destroying somebody's life and career, you know, right. if they if they did the crime, do the time. That's an entirely different oh, yeah. story. Well, not I mean, saying if, that, and but if they're accused, you know, it then like that's the other thing is like uh you know when you go to an authority about it because i know a lot of people that i have it's like then they just fucking ignore you or, or and, and sometimes i'm like well then they feel like they can't say anything because they already did what they were supposed to do yeah i mean for instance i had a, a lady during that holy uh oh god what the fuck do you call uh like the whole like uh what was a prop three for abortion and everything she was going door to door and she's been like done that before to like my house. She will write all these long lists of shit and she'll put it inside your doorknob at your house. Just like trying to talk against it or whatever. And then she'd done that before for like her church and shit like that, which I'm all for like being religious, obviously, but like, man, it's my fucking door. So don't put shit on my door. And I told her before, quit doing this shit. And I called the cops and I was like, this is what happened. Never called me back, never did shit, yeah. never did nothing. I mean, that's the thing that bugs me about the police, but my police are probably different than what your police are. And that's the thing that makes it so hard for anything like that is because, like, I deal with them all the time for work, and they never fucking show up. I mean, somebody pretty much has to be shot for them to get there or going on. But, I mean, that's just the thing is it's, it's different for everyone. But Yeah. The cops are just know. another population group where it's like, there's good ones and bad ones, right. and you know, like I, and it's where I met are... one, and he was fucking awesome. I yeah, got like yeah. uh, I got jumped while I was at work one time, and he was like an undercover cop and did like a lot of that kind of stuff, and was actually coming out of that. He, he was with it. the guys that jumped you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was with the guys. That yeah. No, he like handled it all, and he did a fucking great job. He found the dude that did it and took care of it all and everything like that. Um, and he was so frustrated with the people he was working with, he went back to doing undercover work and he was like, fuck this. I, I, I have, I feel more, uh, fulfillment from doing that, but it's, it's hard because I think that's another thing that adds to that, uh, you know, arguing and like bickering and stuff is everybody wants to think that like your local politicians or church officials or, uh, you know, police department or paramedics are all the same as like what the other ones and the other ones. So if somebody's like, these people suck, 
Well, and the other ones are like, well, mine don't suck. So yeah. yours must well, not really it's suck like either. It's like anything else. You right. can't, you know, the actions of one person don't or at least shouldn't necessarily reflect on the entire group, right? right. Like it's the whole one bad apple arc. I mean, right. And granted, you like you got to identify it. You got to get that shit cleaned up. But Right. And every single group is managed by different people. So like, you know, our people might have one like boss that's over there is the fucking dumbass. But your guy over here might be, you know, keeping his people in line and doing a good job. Uh, no different than where you work. Your bo- boss might be a jackass. Uh Mine might be fucking cool and know yeah. how to handle their shit, but right. I mean, I think that doesn't help either. I mean, I don't know. There's so much shit that draws people to separate them all the time. It's yeah, yeah. It sucks to try to ever be positive about stuff when you constantly see that. There's so much negative, like drowning all that out. Yeah. I mean, and it's constant. Like you're saying, like they always pick the shittiest headlines to want to put everywhere. And I'm like, fuck that. I mean, if you're that's just... such a huge part of it, though, man. Like everything does us feel disproportionately shitty all the oh, time. Yeah. Oh, because, yeah. you yeah. know, they, they go by what gets the eyeballs yep. and the yep. clicks and the views and the discussions yep. and the engagement. If it bleeds, it leads. Exactly. Yeah, then. And then all of a sudden you're just seeing this shit. It's like, oh, my God, the world's fucking crumbling around. All right. Uh, you know, well, then I mean, you go outside and you're like, yeah, everything's everything's just... fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's nuts because, yeah, that's exactly what it does. It's like. I don't know. I I don't I haven't had cable now. I think in like three years. I don't think I'm ever gonna have cable again. Nah, fuck because, that shit, yeah. And it's like I don't watch that kind of news. I I feel better that I don't. And I feel better that I don't spend as much time on social media too. I used mm-hmm. to get way more involved with that during the during like political races. I'm just like <laughs> I, yeah, I shut yeah. that shit right off. <laughs> I know because I'm like I don't want to delete you, Aunt Rita. Like just <laughs> yeah. because I'm just like I, we don't agree or we just don't see eye to eye on some shit. Because, I mean, I go to church and all that stuff, but I'm very much, like, separate church from... I, I keep my religion and politics separate. Yeah. But... My whole take is, like, social media should not be a place for serious topics. No. I'm sorry. Like, no. can you go uh-huh. on there and crack a fucking joke? Yes, like, I know. You're trying to, you know, Pulse convey your, your thoughts on the world right. Put your picture, you 200 kids, characters you know, or like, less. Uh-huh. Like, go fuck yourself, dude. Yeah. yeah. Nothing's that nuanced. Like, it's not that cut no. and dry. Yeah. If you're on no. either far... Side right. left or right, you're probably off your fucking rock. Right? So. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's. I think most Let's get some people more cats I know, playing with lasers for Christ. Fuck sake. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why half the time, if you look at most of the shit that we post, I usually is pictures with her cats and shit like that. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, we're very much all pretty much. I mean, I'm. I write most of the stuff, and I do all of our social media stuff. So, a lot of them, I, I might have to ask if they're okay if I post certain shit. But like, we're all pretty much the same. We're all pretty much in the middle. Anything on both sides too far is kind of crazy. Yeah, uh, anything yeah. to where you don't actually do the research to see what's true, or if you autom- automatically like just hate somebody just because they're Democrat or Republican, it's like yeah, yeah. You know, who who fucking cares? Maybe yeah, yeah. maybe vote for you know Tim that's down the road running for the commissioner, and he's a fucking cool dude, and you know he'll do a difference, but. I don't know. That ain't the way it is. It's crazy. Yeah, man. It drives me nuts when people refuse to see the other side of an argument, too. Yeah. Even if, like, you, you know, have kind of come to your conclusion that you fall on this side of an argument. But it's like right. when you, like, can't even give any validity to another side of an argument. Like, right. when it's clearly has validity. You know, oh, yeah. It's like, come on. You're just part of the problem now. Well, and the necessity yeah. for everyone to feel like they've got to adhere to every single thing yeah. for whatever in group they are tribe, a part of is you know? absurd. Like, I know. Is it? Right. I don't know. Like, I don't think starving children need to be left for dead but i also don't yeah. think everybody needs to be given free cell phones like a few years ago like yeah i'm not yeah political I, one way or the other but right. we use a little bit of you know some modicum of common sense yeah. here and like not i know i think that's yeah. where it comes down to dude the lack of common sense extremism mm-hmm. all over the place and it's just mm-hmm. like i don't know i think a lot of people in michigan are actually pretty fucking centrist you yeah know, honestly too, yeah so yeah i mean most people i know are all pretty in the middle I mean, about a lot of shit. I mean, a lot of people keep a lot of their shit separate, I guess. I mean, and most people will listen to two. I mean, even in our, like all my bands, all of us have some different opinions on shit. Um, but I mean, like shit, me and me and Brandon are pretty much fucking like damn near socialist for some stuff. And then Colt's pretty Republican and conservative about some stuff. But we don't talk about or care too much. Yeah, and yeah. we still listen to each other yeah. about it. And because we feel like every single issue is different 
Yeah, no, that's no. you got to take it issue yeah. by issue, and I hate like right. if also it's like is that when people make it like your whole identity, right? That's what's fucking annoying. It's just oh, like yeah. okay, dude, you know, like it's not that fucking big of a deal. Or Get like, something else no. to hang your yeah, hat on, man. Yeah, you need dude, more yeah. hobbies, uh, or you need to become get a good life, at something. Right, man. Like, I mean, that's why <laughs> be I'm more like, talented at something. Well, and just put your fucking time into something that's going to be constructive. Yes, I mean, yeah. anything that's constructive, whether, you know, it's yeah. whether it's painting or playing music or yep. taking pictures or just going out and whatever doing you want to do. Yeah. Man. I fucking mean, a fantastic and entertaining podcast. That's yeah. right. <laughs> a great social media <laughs> presence on Twitter. On Twitter or Twitter. <laughs> 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 Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. <God damn. laughs> My true old man is showing up. Twitter. We're up on the Twitter. You go to the Google machine. <laughs> You're going to go find us on the Facebook. <laughs> Actually, you guys don't have a Facebook, do you? No, I might start one of those. I was going to say. That, Facebook's really the only platform I fuck with at all, and I manage a bunch of pages for work shit and stuff, so like, I'm still kind of on there, you know? Yeah, so, I, I, I use it all the time. It's yeah. I, it's the easiest one for me. But me too. That, I don't know. I like uh, Because I, I, when you guys did one for Jay and them, I put it on, shared it on our Facebook page because I took the picture that you guys had or whatever and put it all on there. Oh, love that, dude. Much appreciated. Heck yeah. Everybody else listening should do the goddamn <laughs> same, by the way. Help us fucking grow this thing. Got a whopping six Twitter followers, which is not getting the job oh, yeah. done. Spread one, the one, word, you rat bastards. One of them's the guy from Trapped. He's just, <laughs> he's just waiting to chime in. Yes. We have to tag him in this episode, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Trapped guy. <laughs> got to get oh, him man. on to defend himself. Dude. Hell yeah. yeah. He got <laughs> shit to do. Dude, I was, I was laughing. They were like doing some kind of a... I don't know, some kind of tour thing on a bus or something like that. And they were like doing these VIP backstage tickets, but they're playing places like Papa Pete's. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, where there is no backstage. I'm like, I'm like, is it to go to, to come the, on the bus? Right. Man. I was like, is it to go to the tour bus, hang out, have a couple drinks. Uh, That'd like, be fun. With a different band, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> really slinging that hate at Trapped right yeah, now, and it's great. I'm, I'm headstrong And it's all it, totally yeah. red, dude. <laughs> yes. It's all fully warranted. That song stunk. Indeed. Trapped stinks. Yeah. Because uh, I think he talked shit to Black Dahlia. Or, or I don't know. He was doing that, just doing it for a whole bunch of bands. I was like, man, fuck this guy. Wow. Like, Side note, that dude we got coming on uh, next month, that comedian slash musician guy's buddy's apparently the drummer for Black Dahlia Murder. So oh, cool. So oh, no shit. Kind of wild, yeah. That's cool. Oh, I know the one dude, uh, he said he's friends with the drummer or the old drummer. I think he said he's friends with the drummer for Black Dahlia. I might be mixing my bands up here. Because the, the, my buddy, Zach, oh, I mean, we're not buddy, but we know each other from playing a lot of shows. He, Zach... Gibson, I think, is his last name. He played drums in uh, on the Miasma CD, so like the second Black Dahlia murder one. And he plays in some sweet bands. One's called uh, Shit Life, actually. And they're just like <laughs> fucking just brutal grind, just like... Uh, I mean, they they got I think weed is on all their shit, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. But um, he played in like Wolves in the Throne Room, I think, is uh, one of the bands he did. Something like that. And then he did another one. He's in uh, another band. One of the guys from... Uh, I think he's actually with somebody from dillinger in battle cross and all of them are jamming in a band right now i can't remember what the hell it is but they're fucking shock narcotic as the name of the band okay they're fucking sweet battle cross i know those guys oh yeah they're they're, they're cool dudes they just uh broke up yeah yeah they which is weird because they're like fucking jamming shows for a while and yeah. rising like when we were in infinite we were playing with them guys that like at Cricket's Pub and off Broadway, yeah. and then all of a sudden the next year they're like, "Oh yeah, we're going on tour with Metallica and Killswitch Engage." And it's like, what? "Wait, am I thinking of the same band?" From so are you Detroit? still coming to Crickets next weekend? Yeah. Then, yeah. Or? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It was crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they played like a couple of reunion shows, I think, or some shows and stuff like that. I don't know who was playing drums for them, but yeah, it was it was it was weird, man. Like they blew up. I mean, kind of like if he dies, yeah. he dies. You know, if he dies, he dies. Was playing shows, and all of a sudden they toured with Arson Anthem, and uh, I got—I got, don't remember what other band it was, but I think they were about ready to go on a tour with like Black Dahlia or somebody like that, and then just some shit fell apart, and then yeah, it didn't work out for them. But all them guys are still either jamming in bands or doing shit related to it. You know, mm -hmm. Dane got into doing a—I don't know what band he's playing in now. I think he's doing some kind of a jam band or something he was doing rap and shit like that harley's kid plays in that uh i 
Her- Heranja or Hiragana or something like that. They're really fucking. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I, think, I think I think it's here. You know a lot of fucking bands, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fucking old man. Yeah. I think Her- Hiragana or something like that. Okay. But Harley's kid sings in that. Okay. And cool. so like, and he they're playing all over. They're playing Papa Pete's and shit like that. I'm like, man, that is so fucking weird. Like when yeah. I remember him at shows and shit like that when he was like this fucking tall right i'm like now he's playing shows with us yeah but yeah shit like that and i think you know and then addison is in tiny tree so they're still jamming and he's doing all of his own recording and shit like that for bands but man it's yeah that's weird it's just well yeah i know a lot of people because i'm old and muskegon's small man yeah that's but, true that's true i mean Everybody that plays music then is still pretty much playing music now or uh, does something related to it. Yeah. I mean, shit. Yeah. You guys are throwing a lot of love for all the bands that you know and have met over the years. Oh, yeah. You got any brutal band wars, man? It's like, these guys are total douchebags. Uh-huh. <laughs> and please name names if you would. But you ever gotten into like, a real scrap with another band? It's like, There's definitely dicks, been man. some fucking assholes, oh, yeah. man, for sure. And I mean, you've played way more chills than I have. I haven't played chills for like 10 years, so... Oh, but yeah, yeah I, I I don't mean, even know like names and shit. But there's definitely guys that were like, dicks. thought they were way bigger than they like. It's like, dude, oh, we're yeah. playing some shitty thing. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Shut the fuck up. You <laughs> yeah. Know, like, yeah, get over yourself a little mm-hmm. bit there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit like that. Oh, like I like I always hated it when bands would go way over their set. I'm like, oh, you know, there's the only they're like there's too, four yeah. bands. We have uh, like a half hour set. You're here like. 45, 50 minutes. Nobody wants to hear you play a fucking Metallica cover. I know. Like, yeah. Now you're like, playing Ozzy. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I've been down that fucking road. And it's like, I'm not, yeah, I don't know. I've seen some fucked up shit like that. Some, even with, with Colt, we've played some shows with some people. I'm just like, man, it was, some of them are supposed to be like open mic nights and they're like supposed to play for 15 minutes. And all of a sudden they're playing for like 40 minutes for like, it's 10 o'clock. We we're supposed to play like an hour ago. It's Wednesday. The yeah. fourth yeah. encore yeah. that nobody asked for. Like, yeah. get the fuck out of stage. Like, fuck. But no, I mean, most of the time, as I've gotten older now, like, we pretty much now I know half the bands I play with, or yeah. I book them because I've met them from other people. Like, uh, we played Papa Pete's not that long ago, and I got to see some uh, people I hadn't seen in years, like, from uh, a band called Iced Out. Uh, one of the, their dudes uh, is the the nephew to somebody from blood and blood out. And I, there's an old video of me playing a stage and he's like that small screaming in a microphone. And now he's, like this fucking tall the bass player. Like Those are the two <laughs> most like, gangster metal band names I've ever oh, yeah. heard. Iced Out and Blood In, oh, yeah, Blood dude. Out. That's hard. Dude, dude, Blood and Blood that, Out dude. is like my uh, childhood favorite band, pretty much. Like that. That's one that that got me into like hardcore, and uh, that's like the Indiana like uh, Michigan City hardcore scene. It, it's cool. I, if I was ever gonna move anywhere else, that's where I'd move. Like that's my second family, pretty much. I'd say other than like you know West Michigan, just because all those good dudes are just fucking super chill. My buddy Jaron down there, he I've I've loved every band he's been in, and they've all been different fucking genres. Like the dude is just a killer fucking musician. He was in like a jam band called Jesus Chrysler. It was like <laughs> it was fucking that's awesome. A great name. That's a great book. Great name. It, it was like stoner metal, <laughs> and I mean he was in Blood and Blood Out and did vocals for that. It was like um metallic hardcore shit. He was in like a Pennywise band called All These Years and Nothing. Uh yeah, it's good. It's cool. And then he was in like a all out war kind of band like uh, called uh fuck. God, what was the last one he was in? Nah, I can't remember. Yeah. No, oh, Enemy of Creation. But, like, just, like, all these different bands and shit are all from the same fucking people, though. It's, like, all the same cool people that have been jamming for years. All just jamming with a few other people that were in this other band. I feel like that's how West Michigan is, too. All of us will jam with other people that we used to play shows with that were in other bands. And then other people kind of drop out because they don't want to play anymore. Yeah. So then all of us end up finding each other. They're like, you still want to play? (laughs) Incestuous in the best possible way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like. There's um, always the joke, especially about drummers, that like, you oh, know, yeah. if you're a drummer, you're in fucking 15 Dude, it's bands. fucking true. That's how I felt uh, last year. I was like, <laughs> I was like, at one point when I was in the four, and I was like, what the fuck am yeah, I doing? Yep. And I mean, I was at a point where I would drive to Chicago Friday night, spend the night, jam Saturday, or record or whatever we were doing. And then I'd drive back Saturday night, and then I'd go and I'd play at church on Sunday. 
And I was like, that was too much. Yeah, I'm like, that's that's hard to maintain. Yeah, yeah. especially right. if, when, if you're working a, a, a day job. Oh shit, yeah, you know, and like yeah, that's brutal. I was like, that's what you do when you're single and sad. Like, <laughs> you just travel because you're running from your emotions. <laughs> and, but I mean, there's yeah. nothing wrong with grinding on doing shows. Oh and yeah, stuff for too. sure. I mean, like that's that's fucking great too. But oh yeah, for sure. It's, so that point, if you want to do three more podcasts this week or something, yeah. I got nothing but time. Uh, Indeed. <laughs> just saying. Uh, Can't book yeah. guests. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Wait. I was gonna say. I mean, there's. A, I know there's a shit ton of people that definitely be down. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, well, you could definitely Rapids. hit me with some names. I was joking. We're fucking booked out three yeah. months right now, at least. Well, you I mean, know, you so. had me booked out like what three uh-huh. three months ahead or something yeah. like that. Because yeah. we talk about doing for Christmas. Well, I had I, like, I had something for yep. you set up earlier, yep. and you were like, "Uh, how about uh January?" Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "All right." I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> yeah, because then all, all of our Christmas shit. Christmas is fucking nuts, man. Same for me, bro. Bro, I was moving and like yep. we didn't do two weeks of doing this. It was one of the craziest times, like literally in my life. We book them out of ways, man. When Dangerville comes calling, uh-huh. people tend people, to answer, yeah. like, tend to pick up the phone. People coming out of the know? woodwork, you know, <laughs> kind of a big deal. I, I haven't seen you in years. <laughs> Come to make my appearance. <laughs> yeah, well, I fucking appreciate you coming tonight, hey, man. No, no problem. And I man. did. We did have to move it to a Thursday night too oh, because yeah. uh, I'm going to a concert tomorrow. So I appreciate you making that. Uh, yeah, no problem. That little Where, concession. I for forgot me. who are you going to see again? Uh, so my friends' bands, uh, several. So it's it's at the Pyramid Scheme tomorrow night. It's being oh, headlined nice. by Intransient, which is Nick Hagen, who's been on the show a bunch of times. He's one of my best friends. Um, and, and I know all those dudes and, you know, uh, they're like a prog rock band and then nice. imminent sonic destruction who, a couple of those dudes, they're one of the bigger prog metal bands from Detroit. Uh, they're fucking nice. killer. Uh, they're doing the show too. And then, oh, yeah. uh, paradigm shifter who I don't know any of those guys, but our friend Josh lens is best friends with a bunch of those dudes. And That's he's, cool. he's on the show a lot. That's so. a real, have you been to the pyramid scheme before? Oh yeah. I, oh, yeah. I love that place. I, I, yeah. I went the first time I went, there was the CMC Chris and uh, he's like just a rapper. And then I saw that Max Sabbath band that, okay. that was fucking, that was pretty yeah. fucking sweet. I've seen a lot of shows there. Not, not a lot, but a, a, a lot. Uh, they it's freaking, a cool, uh, it's a cool place. My band basically had quit gigging right when they opened. That's and so cool. I never got to play there either. We played there once with Colt. We played uh, with um, ah, uh, what the hell is the name of the band? One was with uh, Steve uh, Steve Stover. I think, I think he calls it Stover's Pipe or something, it's a Hot Pipe or something <laughs> like that. It's like a one man dude. He just fucking goes at it. Yeah. Um, the other one, damn, I don't remember. Oh, Harley Poe is the name of the band that we okay. played with. They're uh, kind of like. I don't know. Just got like that weird, like indie, like punk kind of yeah. thing. But they're they're fucking awesome. Shows you want to plug before we get out of here, man. I think you said you got something coming up in like Aprilish. Oh, uh, we got anything before that? Oh, uh, we got. Uh, we actually are playing in two weeks. We're playing Jeff Fest at Papa Pete's with uh, Drink Their Blood and, uh, and a bunch of other cool bands. Yep, that's Kalamazoo. And then February, I think it is eleventh. We're playing at Turn Styles in Grand Rapids. Um, and then I think the next show with Iron after that isn't until like the summer. We're playing some festival thing with a bunch of other hardcore metal bands somewhere in Grand Rapids or Kalamazoo, wherever that ends up. And then uh, Colt, I think our first show is with it's with Ernie Clark and the Bastards. Uh, I think that one's at Mulligans. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, or it might be at Turnstiles. I can't remember, but it's in Grand Rapids, wherever the hell it is. Cool. And uh, yeah, those are the ones that we have coming up next. When are the covers coming out? You gotta. Well, you're still working on them. I'm so still working on them, but I know that those are going to be dropping because I'm going to put them all out at once too, with like a CD, and maybe put it like all the money towards something. Because every time we drop like a a release, all of, like usually the digital sales go to something. So like one will go to, like the suicide uh, prevention lifeline, and sometimes like I did one for when I did terrors, one with the underdogs. The money went to um uh the noah project in muskegon so i've donated to them a bunch so, of times you know, shit like fan. that and yeah. uh so I'll, I'll probably figure out what it will go to and then put it out but i'll probably put out like the deftone single first uh, yeah. probably in february or march sweet so well, keep us posted yeah. man on when shit's Hell coming yeah. out and uh 
Make sure you're hitting me up on the show, especially the ones that are in GR here. I'll try to make Hell it Hell yeah. And then over. we need to talk so we can play some fucking shows together. Yeah, man. So. Well, I'm down to, like I said, and we're trying to get out there and get shows. We got a whole show put together that's bad. Or else, I'm not going to lie, but Hell yeah. it's hard to, it's just, you know, we're old men, so it's difficult. But Dude, I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah. But and no. then uh, I know Jason, uh, I'm getting uh, Jay back on the show here too, this show. So yeah. maybe you can come out with him too. I like having Hell a fucking... Yeah. Him coming out with different fucking. He was one of our first guests ever on. Yeah, I listened to all those ones. That was cool because, yeah, I mean, he never planned on being a member of Iron. He was just going to be distant, so I kind of sucked him in. But it's cool. Like we we hang out and talk, and then still jam. So it's it's cool. He's like one of those people that, uh, you know, he teaches you to be a better musician, but also just to look at shit differently. So it's always really cool to chit chat with him. Yeah, yeah, he's a solid. He's a solid dude. No doubt about it. Dude, that dude grinds. (laughs) Yeah, hard i know i mean I'm, I'm glad that he's fucking hitting it so hard right now. oh yeah me too him. yeah i mean he needs some shout out jay hope you're listening homie <laughs> the edp studios edp beats on youtube uh-huh. uh, exador productions on everything else don't plug his shit, <laughs> <laughs> shit. gotta get a small uh, small ransom yeah, yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, we, got, we got to get paid here so. <laughs> all right let's wrap this shit up i peace appreciate you coming out bro hey, appreciate you having me man you. all right peace y'all peace bye